Number 10, Garfield. In the 80s in France, people were baffled when Garfield started constantly washing up on shore, specifically a phone that is in the shape of the orange cat. The phenomenon went on for 35 more years, Garfield's continuously drifting ashore like a chubby lasagna loving message in a bottle. The pictures of the water damaged cats polluting rocks and beaches look like something straight out of a movie or a weird photoshop. The reasoning behind the cats taking over France wasn't revealed until 2019, when it was discovered that a shipping container had fallen off a boat and became trapped in an underwater cave. Comments on the situation said things like, I'm going to assume that the shipwreck happened on a Monday. And another person pointed out the fact that this means the Garfields weren't even packaged or organized, just thrown loose into the container in a mountain of orange. Number 9, Train Graveyard. In 1985, a man named Paul Hepler was mapping the bottom of the ocean near New Jersey when his device picked up a reading of two massive metal objects. 90 feet underwater, he discovered two different trains that had been missing since the 1850s. He said, I didn't know what it was at first because the water was dirty and the visibility was so bad back then. Once I got a better look at it in later dives, I could see they were locomotives. The trains are incredibly rare models as only a few were made before they quickly became obsolete. The interesting thing is, nobody knows how the trains actually came to rest under the 90 feet of water. Some theories suggesting that they were being transported across the ocean when they were hit by a bad storm, falling overboard and quickly sinking to the ocean floor. The trains have no record of going missing and don't even have any record of ever being built. Number 8. Robot Hand Let's not go very far and take a look at something that washed up on a beach in Staten Island. An organization called Underwater New York is responsible for photographing and documenting unusual objects that either wash up on beaches in New York or are found lurking on the ocean floor. A couple was walking down Great Kills Park Beach when they discovered a metal object in the sand. It turned out to be a large robotic hand with articulated fingers, though some of the fingers were missing. There seems to be no explanation for where the hand came from, so it could be similar to the other stories where some sort of animatronic was being shipped across the water before meeting an unfortunate demise. Or it could be remnants of a robot versus alien war that took place thousands of years ago before humans inhabited the earth, but that's just my theory. Underwater New York has lots of cool and creepy photos, so check out their site if you're interested in more. Number 7, Yonaguni Complex. Yonaguni Japan made their own discovery in 1985, but unfortunately this time it was not Garfield. Instead, divers found what appeared to be a massive underwater pyramid. There were also five other structures in various states of falling apart, temples, a stadium, a castle, a massive arch, and more. They're all connected by roads and what appears to have once been a massive wall surrounding everything. There are also carved inscriptions which appear to have been written in an old language that was once used in the area. A Japanese marine biologist suggests that this is a sort of Japanese Atlantis, a civilization that they believe sank around 5,000 years ago. They figured this out by dating stalactites that were found in underwater caves that they think sank alongside the city. Some people believe that these are just natural formations, but the city layout seems too perfect to just be naturally occurring. Number 6, Undersea River. Now let's look at something that is naturally occurring, but still pretty damn cool and bizarre. If you've ever watched Spongebob, you know that they appear to have a beach underwater, and you probably thought that that was pretty ridiculous. But turns out it's actually pretty real. Research Researchers discovered a massive flowing river at the bottom of the Black Sea, complete with rapid waters and even waterfalls. It reaches depths of 115 feet and even has a volume of water more than the River Thames. It functions basically the same as a river on land, carving out water channels and even flooding plains. So how does this happen? Well, it's due to the content of the water. The undersea river has a higher salt content, making it denser, causing it to stay near the ocean floor and flow with its own current. It has provided us a lot of insight into how sea creatures in certain areas survive, and it's just pretty damn cool to look at. Number 5, Flying Saucer. We're at the halfway point and that means it's alien time. Treasure hunters were using sonar to sweep the Baltic Sea when they picked up what appeared to be a shipwreck. But it wasn't just any normal shipwreck, it looked to be an alien shipwreck. 
It is known as the Baltic Sea Anomaly and they couldn't really figure out what it might actually be. From above, it looks like the exact shape of the Millennium Falcon, but I don't think they found Han Solo anywhere nearby. It's also absolutely massive, being around 197 feet in diameter. The group that made the discovery said, let us put it like this, we have tried a lot of theories. The list is getting shorter and shorter with options, so for now we don't really know. We do not have anything that speaks more for one option or the other. Other theories include things like a Russian spaceship or a World War II submarine device, but I'll stick with aliens for now. Number 4. Mysterious Structure Archaeologists discovered a massive cone-shaped structure in the Sea of Galilee. The form is made up of boulders. It is absolutely massive, 70 meters in diameter and 200 meters down below sea level, estimated to weigh around 60,000 tons. They have found structures like this before, which were used thousands of years ago to attract and breed fish, but this one is absolutely massive compared to all the others that they've found. They think it may have also been created to attract fish when there was an economy based around fish and marine life. They also think that it may have originally been created on land, but eventually sunk underwater as sea levels rose over time. It's also been suggested that this was a structure used to mark a grave or large burial ground. The researchers reporting that they believe the structure could be around 4,000 years old. Number 3. Underwater Prison Who doesn't love an abandoned prison? But maybe that's not enough to get you excited anymore, so how about an underwater abandoned prison? A the prison was established in Estonia outside of a small town, being put together by the Soviet Union. It was located on the edge of a limestone quarry and they used the prisoners to work in the quarry and collect the goods. It lasted like this for a while until Estonia gained their independence in 1991. The Soviets moved out, leaving behind everything that they had established, including the prison. Because of this and the fact that no one was maintaining the groundwater, it started to flood into the quarry, effectively creating a new lake in its place. As the water level rose, it completely swallowed the quarry and a majority of the prison buildings. Only a small part of the prison is still visible above the water and it's now become a very popular spot for divers. Number 2. Rubber Ducks 30 years ago, almost 30,000 rubber ducks took a trip around the world and they didn't even have to pay for a cruise ticket. Similarly to the Garfield phones, the bath toys were being transported from China to the United States in a shipping container. But unfortunately, the container fell into the water and opened up, releasing 28,800 rubber ducks into the sea. They followed the currents and ended up in many different destinations across the world, being reported in places like Hawaii, the United Kingdom, and South Africa. Many different people went in search of the ducks in hopes to both find and track their journeys, and one such person even wrote a book about it titled Moby Duck. While a paddling of bright yellow ducks in the middle of the ocean is pretty fun to look at, it gets stomped on by the massive conversation about pollution and plastics in our waters. Number 1. Underwater Spiders Now let's end it off with something creepy and disgusting and just horrible to think about, at least for me anyways. 250 years ago, explorers first encountered the scuba spider, a spider that actually lives underwater. They do this by trapping air bubbles in their web, using it like a fish gill. When scientists captured 12 of these spiders to study them, they discovered that the creature can breathe underwater for over 24 hours, able to hide itself away from both predators and prey. An entomologist said, it shows how amazing and versatile spiders can be, and I honestly wish spiders would just be a little less amazing and versatile. So next time you're in the ocean and get frightened by a piece of seaweed brushing your leg, don't panic. It's probably not seaweed, just a spider. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have the Nina. The Nina was a ship that was once the flagship of the New York Yacht Club, but that unfortunately changed in 2013 when it disappeared on the Tasman Seas with its owner and six other people on board. The ship had left New Zealand and was bound for Australia on May 29th, and it was estimated to be somewhere from an 8 to 10 day trip. The last time the ship was heard from was on June 4th, and it wasn't until June 12th that the search for the ship began after friends and family of those on board began to get worried as the ship was now 
now a few days overdue. The rescuers searched until it was called off on July 6th after they had searched 737,000 square nautical miles and had found nothing. The search was extremely thorough and they still were unable to find anything. No yacht, no debris, no life raft, and none of the people on board. The last communications with the Nina came on June 3rd and 4th as a crew member was contacting a meteorologist and router for Pacific cruisers in order to get some advice on where the ship should go so as to escape a nasty storm they were encountering. There was also an undelivered text message from June 4th that the satellite phone company was able to retrieve that stated that the storm sails had been shredded the night before and that they would update them later at 6pm with the course info. This definitely wasn't an ideal situation but the message didn't signal that they would have been in immediate distress either. Aside from these messages, there wasn't any other contact that seemed to have been attempted, despite the ship being well equipped with emergency radios, flares, a satellite phone, and all of that sort of thing. Right now, the best guess as to what happened is that the ship may have sunk really quickly following the storms, and it didn't allow any time for the passengers to activate any of the emergency equipment. But at the end of the day, this is all just a guess, and what exactly happened out there still remains a mystery. In our number nine spot today, we have the mysterious whale die off. Between 2015 and 2016, there was a mysterious large die off of whales located in the Gulf of Alaska. The deaths first began to be discovered in late May of 2015 when the carcasses of endangered fin whales were found floating near Kodiak. The total of whales found in the area climbed to 30, with additional reports of five other whales found in the waters just off of British Columbia. Because of the difficulties in retrieving the past whales, it was almost impossible to find out what exactly was causing this. The leading suspect was a toxin being produced by algae, but when one of the carcasses that researchers were able to recover was tested, it came up negative for the toxin that they were searching for. It is possible that the decomposition that had already taken place was the cause for this negative test, but it's also equally as possible that this just wasn't the cause in the first place. The good news is that since 2016, this strange and upsetting anomaly has stopped, so the whales are safe. But unfortunately, we aren't any closer to getting answers on what exactly happened here. In our number 8 spot today, we have the Kaz 2. The Kaz 2 was a 12 meter long catamaran that set sail on April 15th of 2007 and was found adrift just three days later on April 18th, but without her crew. When the ship set sail, she was carrying three crew members, all of which were relatively inexperienced sailors. On April 18th, someone in a helicopter reported seeing the adrift ship, but it wasn't until April 20th that maritime authorities were able to catch up with the boat and boarded it. It was then, however, that they uncovered the bizarre circumstances on the ship. Everything on the ship was perfectly normal, aside from the fact that the crew had just seemingly vanished. There was a meal set on the table waiting to be eaten, a laptop was open and on, the engine was still running, all of the life vests were still on board, and all of the ship's emergency systems were fully functioning. The only out of place things were, of course, the missing crew, the fact that one of the ship's sails was badly shredded, and there was no life raft on board, but it is still unclear whether there was ever one on board. There are many, many theories as to what may have happened to the crew, but none have ever been substantiated or confirmed, which leaves the fate of the three crew members a complete mystery that we may never get the answers to. In our number 7 spot today, we have the disappearance of Baz Jan Adder. Baz Jan Adder was a Dutch conceptual and performance artist as well as a skilled sailor. He set sail on July 9th, 1975 in a ship called the Ocean Wave as he was setting sail to make his single-handed west to east coast crossing of the North Atlantic. He estimated that this trip was going to take around two and a half months, but it wasn't until nine months after he set sail that his boat was found unmanned, floating almost vertically in the water. The people who found the ship were Spanish fishermen who then took the boat back to Spain, where it ended up being stolen. Throughout all of this, Baz was nowhere to be found, and even still, over 40 years later, the mystery of what exactly happened remains. There are people who speculate he fell overboard in heavy, bad weather, but this is of course impossible to tell, especially with neither the boat or Baz to provide evidence. The information to go on has only been what was provided by the people who saw the boat before 
before it was stolen, so of course that is not nearly enough to really have any questions answered. What happened to Baz on his sailing trip is still a mystery, but I do hope one day we find out at least some answers. In our number 6 spot today we have the Gulf of Mexico wreck. For almost two centuries, this shipwreck went undiscovered and undisturbed until the early 2000s when a pipeline bisected it and since then it has been plaguing those who are trying to figure out what mysteries it holds. A team was assembled in order to try and search the wreckage, but every time they attempted, something went wrong that made it impossible for them. Every time they tried, the exploration sub would malfunction right before they were able to begin checking it out. Like I'm talking about everything, from video monitors going out whenever they fired the thrusters, to the sonar breaking, to hydraulics going haywire, one after another. After this whole ordeal, the Navy sent a research sub that pretty much just ended up self-destructing its own rover once it got into the water, and when it made its way to the wreck, its arms were too short to reach anything to collect. So this is all to say that it seems like whatever mysteries this shipwreck is holding, they are destined to remain as such. I'm starting to think that maybe this shipwreck is cursed. In our number 5 spot today we have the disappearance of George Smith. George Allen Smith and his wife Jennifer Hagel Smith had just married and were aboard the MS Brilliance of the Seas, which is a Royal Caribbean cruise ship, as they were doing a Mediterranean cruise for their honeymoon. On July 5th, 2005, the ship was somewhere just off of the coast of Turkey when it was discovered that George had disappeared. The night he was last seen, he was intoxicated from both alcohol as well as prescription drugs, and there was blood evidence found in his cabin as well on the side of the ship. There were two main theories in regards to his disappearance, the first being that his intoxication led to him falling overboard the ship, and the other was that perhaps a robbery had gone bad and foul play had been involved. This case was investigated for over a decade with even the FBI and their mafia division getting involved at one point, but despite this, neither George, his body, or what really happened to him has ever been found. There have been many assumptions made over the years, but 16 years later, it is still a mystery. In our number 4 spot today we have the MV Tai Ching 21. On November 9th, 2008, a Taiwanese fishing vessel was found floating, but it was empty and had been totally gutted by fire. The 50 ton ship had obviously suffered a fire, but since there was no smoke anymore, it was clear it had been a few days since the fire was put out. Upon inspecting the ship, it was realized that the ship's lifeboat, along with its three life rafts, were missing not to mention the crew of 29 missing men. The last transmission from the radio of the ship was on October 28th, but after that, nothing had been heard from the members of the crew and there was no mayday call ever received. The search for the missing men spanned 21,000 square miles or 54,000 square kilometers, and searches were conducted by both the US Air Force as well as the New Zealand Air Force, but unfortunately, the search turned up no results. The last radio transmission from the ship was a personal call from the captain to his wife, which took place on that October 25th, but that was the last time anyone had heard. There still hasn't been any sign of the missing 29 crew members, which of course is absolutely devastating. It is clear they must have abandoned the ship after the fire started, but their fate from there remains completely unknown. In our number 3 spot today we have the disappearance of Rebecca Corium. Rebecca Corium was a British crew member and youth worker on the Disney Wonder cruise ship in 2011. In the early morning hours of March 22nd, Rebecca was seen on CCTV footage in the crew lounge speaking to someone on the telephone phone and it appears as though the conversation was a bit emotionally distressing for her. A few hours later people began to worry because Rebecca hadn't shown up for the start of her shift, which was really unlike her, and when people went to go and see if maybe she had slept in or something like that, they were unable to locate her anywhere on the ship, which of course made people even more worried. That CCTV footage of Rebecca is the last known sighting of her, and since then no one has been able to figure out where she went or what happened to her. The first assumption was of course that perhaps she had gone overboard, and it prompted extensive searches of the waters in the area, but unfortunately nothing turned up. 
Almost an entire year after her disappearance, someone emailed Rebecca's family to say that she was 85% sure she had seen Rebecca with a man on the streets of Venice, but unfortunately this potential lead didn't turn up any real evidence or clues. Many people state that perhaps Disney Cruise Lines know more about what really happened as other crew members have suggested that the entire ship is covered with so many cameras that there's no way that whatever happened could have been missed, but of course there's no evidence that has been discovered which would prove these allegations. It has been 10 years since Rebecca's extremely mysterious disappearance and still no one knows exactly what happened on that terrible night. Hopefully one day some answers are found so Rebecca's family can get the closure that they deserve. In our number 2 spot today we have the disappearance of Jim Gray. Jim Gray was an incredibly important computer scientist who was responsible for many computer advancements that changed things for all of us. Other than being a computer scientist, he was also an experienced and skilled sailor and one day on January 28th, 2007, he set sail for a short trip so he could head out and spread his mother's ashes and she had recently passed away. As he began his trip, Jim spoke to his wife on the phone and said he would call her once he got back in range. After their phone call, he called his daughter as well and left a little message for her and then he was off on his trip, but unfortunately he never ended up returning. Jim's wife Donna was the one who raised the alarm bells as she was away on a trip, but like I mentioned, Jim said he would call her later and he never did. At this point is when the huge searches began. Thousands of images of the area where Jim or his boat might be were uploaded to Amazon Mechanical Turk for people to look through and see if they could find any kind of signs but to no avail. Jim also had an automatic emergency position indicating beacon on his ship, but whatever happened to Jim and the ship clearly didn't meet the requirements, or perhaps it had some sort of malfunction, or maybe it was even turned off. To this day, no one knows what happened to Jim or his boat, as no sign or trace of either has ever been found. The theories of what may have happened are endless and range from Jim intentionally disappearing, to him being kidnapped for his computer skills and brain in order to to do some kind of inside job, and really everything in between. There most definitely are theories that are seemingly more likely than others, but at the end of the day, they are all a possibility. In 2012, Jim's widow asked the court to declare him dead in absentia, which ended up being granted, so as of 2012, Jim has been declared dead but that does not mean that he is. In our number one spot today, we have the disappearance of Amy Lynn Bradley. On March 21st, 1998, Amy and her family boarded the Rhapsody of the Seas, which is a Royal Caribbean cruise ship en route to Curacao. On March 24th, after a fun night on the ship, Amy was hanging out and having a couple of drinks with the ship's band, and one of the members explained that she parted ways with them around 1 a.m. After this, around 5.15 a.m., Amy's father said he saw her sleeping on the cabin bell Balcony. Unfortunately, however, once 6am rolled around, she wasn't there anymore, and this was the beginning of the mystery. Once it was realized that Amy was missing, extensive searches were launched for full days before they ended up being called off when no signs or traces of Amy had ever been found. While this is all super mysterious and nobody really had anything to go on, the plot only thickens with this story. After her disappearance, people began to report seeing Amy. One sighting was by Canadian tourists in 1998 who said that they had seen a woman who resembled Amy and who had tattoos that matched hers on a beach in Curacao. A member of the United States Navy said that he saw her in a brothel and said that she told him her name was Amy and she asked for help, saying she wasn't allowed to leave. The most recent alleged sighting comes in 2005 when a woman claimed she saw Amy in a department store in Barbados. She said that Amy entered the restroom with three men who then threatened her if she didn't follow through on some sort of deal. The men left briefly and the witness said the woman turned to her, said that her name was Amy and that she was from Virginia and needed help, but the men returned right after to take her away again. This story is devastatingly sad and has so many turns and to this day no one knows exactly what happened to Amy or if these witness sightings are accurate at all. Number 10, Giant Oarfish. An oarfish really looks like a fish snake hybrid as it's a huge greatly elonged fish. The giant oarfish is the longest bony fish alive growing up to 36 feet in length. It is found in areas spanning from temperate ocean zones to tropical ones, but unfortunately we know 
little about the oarfish because it lives deep underwater and it's rarely seen. However, we know it neither feeds on humans nor fishes, but on small marine creatures like crustaceans and krill. It was officially discovered in 1772, and in September 1996, the United States Navy SEALs found a giant oarfish that washed up on the shore near San Diego, California, and it was 23 feet long. The giant oarfish is by far the largest member of its fish family, at a published total length of 26 feet, with unconfirmed reports of 36 feet and 56 feet specimens and 600 pounds in weight. Now, even though those aren't confirmed, the 20 foot long one still scares me immensely. Number 9. Giant Squid So the Kraken is a legendary sea monster of enormous size and is said to appear off the coast of Norway, but what if I told you it was real? A giant squid was found on a shore in Denmark in 1853. The giant squid is as elusive as the legend it inspired as it lives so deep underwater that we have limited information about it. However, we know it has the largest eyes of all living creatures, grows up to 60 feet, and is frequently hunted by sperm whales for food. The weaker giant squid generally flees when confronted by a whale, however, it sometimes fights back when cornered and it's not unusual to find sperm whales with scars left from their battles with giant squids. It wasn't until the turn of the century in 2001 that humans saw the giant squid for the first time, and only a few years after that it was finally photographed, making it one of the most elusive on the planet. The giant squid has long been known to exist, but capturing it on film has taken scientists extensive time and voyages to the deepest parts of the ocean where life is difficult to sustain. Number 8. Ribbon Worm Most ribbon worms are very slim, usually only a few millimeters wide, although a few have relatively short but wide bodies. Many have a pattern of yellow, orange, red, and green coloration, and they move slowly using their external cilia to glide on surfaces on a trail of slime, while larger species use muscular waves to crawl. Most of these worms burrow in sediments, lurk in crevices between shells, stones, or the holdfasts of algae or sessile animals. Others build semi-permanent burrows lined with mucus or produce cellophone-like tubes. Mainly in the tropics and subtropics, about 12 species appear in freshwater, and about a dozen species live on the land in cool, damp places, for example, under rotting logs. Now these just sound disgusting to me, and I never want to get close to one. Number 7. Hagfish With a name like that, I think you can expect this thing to be quite ugly. And it is. It actually makes me incredibly uncomfortable. I mean, just look at it. Ew. Like, how? How? How is that even real? Now, hagfish are eel-shaped, slime-producing marine fish, and they are the only known living animals that have a skull but no vibratal column, although hagfish do have rudimentary vertebrae. Hagfish are jawless, and living hagfish remain similar to hagfish from around 30 million years ago. There are estimated to be 76 species of hagfish, and some live as deep as 5,500 feet below the water's surface. They're also known as slime eels because of the goop their bodies produce to ward off predators. These animals can grow to be between 16 and 40 inches long, and some live as deep as 5,600 feet below the water's surface, and as long as they stay away from me though, that's all that matters. Number 6. Barrel eye. The barrel eye, also known as a spook fish, has extremely light sensitive eyes on top of its fluid filled head. The barrel eye was first described in 1939, but remained a mystery to scientists until 2009 when they discovered that its large tubular eyes could actually rotate inside its head. This rotational ability allows them to look upward for potential prey or face forward to see what it is eating. Since barrel eyes live at such depths where there is hardly any light, their tubular eyes help them see whatever faint amounts of light drift down to them. They also have two spots above their mouths, which are called nars, similar to human nostrils. Now I understand why they're called spook fish though, because they do look extremely spooky. Number 5. The Slender Snipe Eel The Slender Snipe Eel, one of the most compact deep sea critters, can grow to a minimum length of 4 feet, but weighs no more than 6 or 7 ounces. It has a bird-like beak with curving tips covered with tiny hooked teeth, which they use to sweep through the water to catch shrimp and other crustaceans. It has a lifespan of 10 years and has more vertebrae in its backbone than any other animal, which is around 750. However, its anus has moved forward during its evolution and it's now located on the throat, so that's 
Nice. <laughs> their reproduction is done by spawning, which is when a female lays eggs and the males lay their sperm into the water at the same time. Now, the slender snipe eel only spawns once in their lifetime as they just die after spawning. Now, it's difficult for scientists to research these organisms because of the extreme environment they inhabit, but hopefully one day we'll get more information on that. Number four, goblin shark. The goblin shark is a rare species of deep sea shark. Sometimes called a living fossil, they are part of a lineage of sharks that are some 125 million years old. The pink skinned animal has a distinctive profile with an elongated flat snout and highly protrusible jaws containing prominent nail like teeth. It is usually between 10 and 13 feet long when mature, though it can grow considerably larger because there was once one captured in 2000 that is thought to have been measured 20 feet. With 50 teeth in their mouths, those gruesome creatures command attention, and honestly not really for the right reasons. Interestingly, female goblin sharks are larger in adulthood than the male species. Now, Despite their size, some researchers believe that these sharks could also dive the depths up to 4,270 feet for short periods of time. Number 3. Ozdax Ozdax is Latin for a bone eater, and these animals are also known as zombie worms. The name alludes to how these worms bore into the bones of whale carcasses to reach enclosed lipids on which they rely for substance. With no mouth, anus, or gut, the 4 centimeter long worms survive by secreting an acid that breaks up the whale bone. Now, why do these even exist? I don't know. They utilize specialized root tissues for bone boring, and it is possible that multiple species of Ozdax reside in the same bone. Ozdax worms are also known to feed on the collagen itself by making holes in the whale's skeletal structure. These holes can also serve as a form of protection from nearby predators. Scientists from the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute using the submarine Rav Tiburn first discovered the species in Monterey Bay, California in February 2002. The worms were found living on the bones of a decaying gray whale in the the Monterey Canyon at a depth of 9,491 feet. Number two, deep sea dragonfish. Deep sea dragonfish are quite small, usually around 15 centimeters up to 26 centimeters. These fish are apex predators and have enormous jaws filled with fang like teeth. In addition, they are also able to hinge their upper jaw system, which leads to them opening the jaw to more than 100 degrees, which is scary. This ability allows them to consume extremely large large prey, often 50% greater than their standard length. The dragonfish can be found in all oceans, and they also exist at a wide range of depths between the surface and thousands of meters down between 3,300 and 9,000 to 800 feet. It is one of the many species of deep sea fish that can produce their own light through a chemical process known as bioluminescence. They cannot luminesce longer than 30 minutes without adrenaline, but in the presence of adrenaline, it can produce light for many hours. They produce blue-green light, the wavelengths of which can travel the farthest in the ocean. The deep sea dragonfish waves its barbel back and forth and produces flashing lights on and off to attract prey and potential mates. Many of the species they prey upon also produce light themselves, which is why they have evolved to have black stomach walls to keep the light concealed while digesting their meal in order to stay hidden from predators. And coming in at number one is immortal jellyfish. The immortal jellyfish is a species of small biological immortal jellyfish found worldwide in tropical waters. Given the nickname Immortal Jellyfish for its ability to revert back to a polyp stage when it is starving or in danger, and basically escaping death, researchers believe this jellyfish may hold the cure to cancer. Under normal conditions, its life cycle is divided into four parts. The union of the male and female gametes produces larva or planuna. It then attaches to the seabed as a polyp similar to an anemone. The polyp then releases ephara or young jellyfish in the phase prior to sexual maturity. They become jellyfish, reproduce sexually and start over. But if they are stressed by an environmental threat, the jellyfish revert. After reproducing, they return to the previous phases, becoming polyps on the ocean floor again. As far as scientists know, jellyfish can repeat the process indefinitely. Thus, they are said to be biologically immortal. They can be eaten by a predator or fall into the hands of a swimmer, but they do not die of old age, which is pretty cool, but it's crazy that they can do this. Starting off this countdown, we have the Kraken caught on camera. Camera. So over the years, scientists have been determined to seek the validity of the Kraken. In fact, in 2012, they wanted to capture one on camera, and their wish came true. 
The team of researchers did this by lowering a camera 2,000 feet below the sea south of Japan. They also lowered down a custom lure that they called E Jelly. Basically, it was a small spinning ring of neon blue lights that was attached to an outstretched mechanic arm. The light would move in ways mimicking a bioluminescent jellyfish. They didn't want to use real live bait as they were afraid it would attract other sea creatures. And the light bait worked perfectly fine. In the end, a giant squid was captured coming towards the camera and wrapping itself around the light bait, and eventually it even attacked the camera. People believe that the Kraken is just a giant squid. So what the scientists caught on camera could be the Kraken. In our ninth spot today, we have a most terrible creature. In 1734, Danish missionary Hans Edge wrote in his journal that he was aboard a ship that encountered what sounds to be like a Kraken. In his entry dated July 6th, 1734, he wrote about how he saw a most terrible creature, as he called it, resembling nothing that he had ever seen before. The monster lifted its head high in the water, so high that it was taller than the crow's nest on the ship. The creature was using giant fins or tentacles to help propel itself through the water. He wrote that it was longer than their ship and it shook everyone on board. The drawings accompanied by this account look just like how we picture the Kraken. So maybe they really did encounter one. In our 8th spot today, we have the Sea Beast of Google Earth. Google Earth was doing its job snapping photos of the land when something was caught lurking in the waters. Now, we don't know for sure what exactly it is, but what we do know is that whatever it is, it is massive. So the picture was taken off the coast of Deception Island in Antarctica. And with a name like that, it's pretty fitting that a kraken may be living in its waters. The satellite image shows some gray creature with a big, roundish head and tentacles. Now, it is hard to tell what it is, but people do believe that it's a giant squid or kraken. And whatever it is, it made some pretty big waves in the water around it. It's just a good thing that no one was around when this beast was splashing about. Moving on to number seven, we have the king and his beast. One of the first sightings of the Kraken was written by King Sver of Norway in 1180. In his entry, he wrote about how this beast was some kind of squid-like monster and how it threatened the seas. He warned sailors that they should be careful sailing in the dangerous seas as they were home to many beasts. In our sixth spot, we have Newfound Krakens. Over the years in Newfoundland, a number of body parts have washed up on shore. The body parts are said to belong to none other than the Kraken. The earliest known time of this happening was in 1873. That's when the Kraken apparently attacked a boat, and in an attempt to escape, the people on board hacked off the creature's tentacles. Only then did it let go of their boat and leave them alone. A few weeks later, more limbs were discovered. However, this time, they just washed up on shore by themselves. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the North Pole Kraken. Apparently, there are Krakens located all over the world. We've had sightings in Japan, Canada, and now the North Pole. Over the years, a number of weird creatures have been spotted in the North Pole in the Arctic Sea. All sightings are pretty much the same. They see a massive dark figure lurking underwater with what appears to be long snake-like tentacles coming out from their body. The creatures never rise out of the water, but the witnesses see them swim by in the dark waters. In our fourth spot today, we have the aggressive kraken. In 2005, two Japanese marine biologists discovered covered what they believe to be the Kraken. Basically, there were reports of a squid attacking bait lines. Turns out that this was a massive squid and it was aggressively attacking these baited lines in the area. Now, they did actually manage to capture footage of it and they were able to identify the creature as being an Archituitis. This is a rare species that can seize bait with extreme force. Also, they're known for being pretty violent. And this creature was close to 30 feet in length, which is pretty massive. They can even attack ships. So this got them thinking, what if this species of aggressive giant squids are what people call krakens? In our third spot today, we have giant squids. 
1870, a giant squid washed up in New Zealand. It was said to be as tall as the top of a ship's main mast, and it could easily take over a ship by wrapping its tentacles around the hull and crushing it. Is it true? Who knows? But around 2005, scientists caught a photo of one. Now they believe that there are millions of them out there. Some, of course, bigger than others, and some more aggressive than others. In our second spot, we have the dead kraken. In 2020, a dead giant squid or kraken washed ashore at a beach in South Africa. Resident Adele Gross was the one who came across it, and her initial instinct was to try and save its life. She said, and I quote, At first, I just wanted to get it back into the ocean, but on closer observation, one could see that it was dead. She apparently was out walking on the beach with her husband when they stumbled upon this squid. They both were taken aback by its appearance. After realizing that it was indeed dead and there was no use saving it, they decided to figure out how it died. Apparently, the night before, they spotted big swells in the same area that the squid was found. But upon closer inspection, the squid did not have any bite marks or injuries that they could see. So to this day, this beast remains a mystery. How did it die? And does it have any bigger relatives living out there? And in our number one spot today, we have the unknown Kraken. In 1848, a number of men were aboard the Royal Navy's HMS Daedalus when they encountered this weird sea creature. Captain Peter McQuay wrote, and I quote, It was an enormous serpent, its color a dark brown, with yellowish white about the throat. It had no fins, but something like the mane of a a horse, or rather a bunch of seaweed washed about its back. He continued on saying, and I quote, It passed rapidly, but so close under our lee quarter that had it been a man of my acquaintance, I should have easily recognized his features with the naked eye. AKA, it was a creature he had never seen before, and he's well versed in these creatures, so had it been something he had seen before, he would have recognized it. Boom, that's what he meant. <laughs> Kicking off the list at number 10. Titan's ocean. Yeah, we'll start this list with an ocean signal out of this world. I mean that in a literal sense. This first one comes from Thanos' home planet, Titan. Yeah, it's one of Saturn's many moons. Saturn has 82 moons in total, so if you were a werewolf and you lived on Saturn, odds are you'd be pretty exhausted. Around 10 years ago, NASA's Cassini spacecraft detected water inside the shell of ice that is that moon. That's pretty exciting. Also, water in space anywhere is exciting, but also I'm like, mm, aliens, they're coming. To quote a Cassini team member, the search for water is an important goal in solar system exploration, and now we've spotted another place where it's abundant. Abundant, did you hear that? It's abundant, nice. We love abundant sea creatures resting on the moon Titan. NASA has detected low frequency radio waves on Saturn's icy moon, and it sounds pretty eerie. To know this is off planet entirely, if there's water involved, I don't wanna hear any space whales. I'm all set. Number nine, submarine propeller. When it comes to creepy sounds or signals heard from the ocean, here or out there, it really depends on who you ask if it's creepy or not. A submarine propeller firing up underwater to many is nothing. Just another day working on the Navy, if anything. But this guy, with submechanophobia, the fear of big things underwater, the sound of a submarine propeller firing up is absolutely haunting. My palms are literally sweating just reading this. The noise of the propeller is traceable, but the sonar, that can mess up some whales. Sonar underwater is so loud you can feel it through your entire body. It's definitely not something you want to witness up close. It's like standing near the speaker at a club. Your bones just feel it. Take a listen. Take a listen. Also, a little headphone warning. It's kind of, it's exactly what you expect. Number eight, slow down. Not to be confused with Slow Ride, that's an absolute banger from the 70s. Slow Down was recorded on May 19th, 1997, so a little bit later. It was picked up in the equatorial Pacific Ocean, just in the middle of literally nowhere. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration picked it up not once, but several times every year. Our best guess as to what this sound is, perhaps it's moving ice in Antarctica. But the fascinating part here is that this sound decreases in frequency over time. It takes about seven minutes in total, so we can't include the entire clip or else you'd be pretty bored. But here's the clip 16 times as fast. So 
scientists believe the sound is a massive iceberg scratching against the ocean floor over a course of seven minutes, and then after seven minutes it came to a, a halt. But the fact that we hear this sound every year, that's the concerning part. We're like, why is it, is it coming out and then halting again? Cthulhu, is that you or is it a lot of ice melting? Most likely the latter, but who knows? Number seven. Whistle. If you can whistle, honestly, hats off to you. I've been trying for years. My lips are too dry and too weak. I have weak lips, apparently. The whistle recorded in July 1997 is not weak, and as this list hint towards, it's certainly not dry. The thing with this mysterious sound is that it was only picked up by one hydrophone, meaning scientists can't pinpoint its location, making this an unexplained sound. It came from somewhere in the Pacific Ocean, so sleep with that in your head. Somewhere, how calming is that? Here's the unidentified sound. What do you think this is? The National Oceanic and the, sorry, the NOAA rather, has compared the sound to some volcanic activity heard in the Mariana Volcanic Arc. But again, we can't pinpoint it at all, so we have no idea. We need three hydrophones to do so. This one was only heard in one. Number six, upsweep. Unidentified yet again. Love to hear it, literally. Sound travels much faster underwater than it does in air, more than four times as fast. So when we hear these noises, one, they're incredibly loud, which is the most impressive part in my opinion, but because sound travels so quickly, it's hard to find out where these calls are coming from. Upsweep is an unidentified sound that was heard throughout the entire Pacific Ocean. When the Pacific Marine Environmental Laboratory fired up its sound surveillance system back in August 1991, these sounds were heard. See, unlike the sounds we've covered so far, this one happens in real time. It's not sped up because it's 17 minutes long, it's just, that's it, that's what it sounded like. These upsweeping sounds lasting a few seconds each ping is definitely concerning. The source was roughly located around New Zealand and South America, somewhere around those places, and it peaks around autumn and spring. So maybe it's just a monster tucking itself in for the winter, and then maybe it's waking back up in spring. Who knows? Scientists at the NOAA have a better idea so far. A little boring, but they believe it's underwater volcanic activity. I say boring, it's not really boring, it's just predictable, I guess. This sound has been getting lower pitched every year, so who knows? Maybe that's a bad thing, maybe it's a good thing. Maybe this thing's gonna go off. Maybe it's gonna go off tomorrow. That was 30 years ago, so any day. Number five, Julia. Who is she? Who is this Julia chick we've been talking about? Julia sounds like a rather friendly addition to this list, but don't let her name fool you. Julia is... Terrifying, definitely, yeah. Back in March 1999, this noise here was recorded again by the NOAA, and this time the noise was heard across the entire Pacific Ocean hydrophone array. So across all that distance, we heard Julia. So whatever made this noise, be it an iceberg, volcanic activity, giant fish from Legend of Zelda, it's got power behind those vocals, you know? She's loud. The point of its origin is determined to be somewhere around Bransfield Straits and Cape Adair. This Cape Adair gets a lot of action in the world, sound-wise and bloop-wise, and we think it's because of icebergs, but maybe the Kraken's name is just Julia. Maybe this is her just slowly introducing herself to the world. Again, it's a long clip in real time, but sped up, sounds like somebody's humming underwater. It's terrifying, take a listen. This one creeps me out a lot, a lot. I think I've heard the hum before. I don't know, maybe it was Kid Cudi in the distance, maybe it was this hum. Either way, I'm on board. The hum has been heard for decades now. We have no idea where the hum is coming from. Our best guess is that it has something to do with, of course, as the title hints, the ocean. A resident from Woodland, England spoke out on their experience saying, it vibrates through the house. We've turned all the electricity off in the house and we can still hear it, so it's not that. It's not tinnitus, that's a high pitched sound and this is very low. If I put my fingers in my ears, it stops, so I know it's not in my head. It's heard commonly in Hawaii, Britain, North America, so it's, hey, everywhere. It's been heard everywhere, I guess. Some have called it the Windsor hum, which is insanely close to us, hence why I think I've heard it in real life. I put the microphone to you now, people, the fine people people of YouTube. Have you heard the hum? If so, where were you? Comment down below. Number three, 2021 boom. A little bit more recent for this one. Back in early 2021, San Diego residents reacted to what sounded like a sonic boom. Well, it's been heard three times since the initial report. And many still have questions. I have questions. Now you have questions. Windows were shaking, doors were rattling, all of San Diego heard and felt this thing 
But what was it? An earthquake? Being in San Diego and all residents are used to earthquakes, but this was entirely different. Everyone felt something new here. Also, it helps to know that no earthquakes were reported at this time, so that theory is just out of the way. And the Marines didn't take responsibility for it as well. And if it was a sonic boom from a plane, well, that would be pretty obvious. We'd kind of have an idea. We'd have a few ideas if it was a plane ripping overhead. Plus, they're not allowed to do that kind of stuff that close to the coast. December 28th, 2021, residents were posting their thoughts on Twitter. One user tweeted, San Diego is cool because I'm like, oh wow, just felt an earthquake. But not actually, it was a sonic boom. Well, keep an ear out for any more mysterious sonic booms coming from the ocean in 2022. The last one wasn't long ago at all. If you live in San Diego, drop us a comment. Help us understand what's going on. Number two, the train. This sound was given its name because, well, it sounds like a passing train in the distance. Simple as that, sometimes it's not, you know, scientific. It was first recorded on March 5th, 1997, and it sounds, honestly, it sounds like my PS4. It sounds really loud, it sounds like a really loud, really hot fan that's gonna just, just lift up and take off in the middle of playing Warzone. I'm like, hi, no, come back. Here's the clip. The leading theory as to what's making the sound is not a surprising one. Large icebergs grounding near Ross Sea and Cape Adair. Again, that's probably the most plausible explanation here. Friendly reminder that more than 80% of the ocean is undiscovered, so my only question is, what if it's not? Number one, 52 hertz whale. I love whales because they're the closest thing to a dinosaur, in my opinion. They're massive, we have no idea how they mate, that's still a mystery. We mentioned that in another list. They're beautiful, complex creatures that we should just leave alone. Probably, definitely. Especially the 52 Hertz whale. Well, maybe not too alone, because there's a documentary about this sound. Joshua Zeman made a documentary about the loneliest whale on the planet. Sounds pretty depressing, but it's equally as interesting. For decades now, we've heard this sound. Back in 1989, the US Navy first detected this sound that measured in at more than twice the frequency of a normal, healthy whale call. So this thing's loud. Originally, what got them intrigued was the fact that this could have been a military mechanical sound, of course. But then they thought, well, maybe it's an animal. Perhaps this is like a new Cthulhu hybrid dinosaur thing that someone's working on. This is a lonely whale, but why is its frequency scaring away possible friends and mates? In our number 10 spot today, we have musical instruments. Two parts of a destroyed clarinet, as well as a violin that was played by bandmaster Wallace Hartley, were found among the wreckage of the Titanic. I know musical instruments aren't exactly a terrifying discovery, but the discovery reminds us of the heartbreaking story of the Titanic's band. As the Titanic sank, it is famously known that the band played on, despite the absolutely horrific incident that was taking place around them. At first, it was widely believed that they did this because they were ordered to, and for the record, if this were the case, that still would have been insanely brave of them. But as it turns out, this is far from true. The band members were in fact not ship employees, which means that they had the same rights as any passengers to leave. So why didn't they? Well, it is now widely believed that it most likely was so that they could use their music to help calm people so that they wouldn't panic. That's some major bravery right there. In our number 9 spot today, we have a men's shoe. This artifact is one of the rarest to be shown of the items that have been recovered from the Titanic wreckage because of the fact that it is in such poor condition. All that remains of the shoe are the welt, top cap, and just a touch of the insole. This artifact does a couple things. It reminds you of the very real humans who became victims of this tragedy, and it also reminds you of the unrelenting nature of the ocean. Seeing the personal belongings of the passengers, regardless of knowing who specifically the shoe belonged to in their story, just adds a personal element. Like you almost knew them. And then seeing how torn up the shoe has become is a strong reminder to us all that we truly are are no match for mother nature, and the ocean is one of the most powerful and frightening things on the earth. In our number 8 spot today we have a love letter. Richard Geddes was a cabin attendant on the Titanic who wrote a love letter to his wife while aboard, but unfortunately she would never go on to receive it. The letter was written on the original Titanic stationery, and it even had its original white star line envelope when it was found. While this story in itself is of course extremely sad, and again one of those reminders of the human side of those who were in this incident this letter also contained something else beside utterings and confessions of love. It also featured a description that Richard wrote for his wife of a near collision that the Titanic had with the SS City of New York, obviously prior to the terrible iceberg incident. There were people who had witnessed this near collision and believed that it was a bad omen for the Titanic. In our number 7 spot today, we have a pocket watch. Okay, this artifact most certainly isn't the scariest one on today's list, but the story behind who it belonged to is one for the books. Sinai Cantor 
was 34 years old when he was a passenger on the Titanic. On board with him was his wife Miriam, and the pair were from Russia. They purchased second class passenger tickets, which at the time cost them 26 pounds, which is about $3,666 in today's money. When tragedy struck and the Titanic was sinking, Sinai immediately thought of his wife. He was able to get her aboard one of the life rafts, thankfully, and as far as I know, she was rescued from the icy waters. Unfortunately, the same could not be said for him, however, as he ended up being one of those who passed away in the sinking of the ship. During rescue efforts, this pocket watch ended up being recovered from his body. In our number six spot today, we have the inspection card. This inspection card once belonged to a woman named Marion Meanwell. What could possibly be worrisome about an inspection card? Well, it shows how Marion was not intended to be on the Titanic, but by some turn of events, she unfortunately found herself as one of the passengers. The card shows that she was originally meant to be traveling on a ship called the Majestic. For some reason, the trip she originally had planned was delayed, and she instead was assigned to the ill-fated Titanic. You can see that the word Majestic was crossed out on her card, which shows us the change in plans. If only people were able to see what was about to strike and could have warned her. In our number five spot today, we have the Titanic radio. Okay. Don't yell at me. This is a piece of the ship that has not yet been recovered, but it's the focus of much debate on whether or not it should be retrieved from the wreckage. Known in 1912 as the Marconi Wireless Telegraph Machine, the radio on the Titanic sent distress calls to nearby ships that ended up saving the lives of 700 people in lifeboats. Despite how many people died in the Titanic tragedy, many of their bodies have never been recovered, which is why there were debates about whether or not to retrieve the artifact because of the fact that there might still be remains located in the same area as the radio is. Lawyers have argued against the recovery of the radio because the dive plan did not include the prospect of there being human remains located down there. It also was argued because in order to retrieve it, they would need to cut into the ship's radio compartment, which was strongly opposed by preservation advocates. As of right now, it appears as though the dive to retrieve the radio will still occur, but it isn't exactly clear when. This radio would be a very valuable artifact, but it also would hold an eerie tale of exactly when and how the radio was used during the final moments of the Titanic. In our number four spot today, we have the telegraph. Separate from the radio we just talked about, the ship's telegraph machine was recovered in 1987, and this was used to relay commands to the engine room. So it was used as a communication device on board rather than to communicate with other ships. This telegraph machine is likely the one that was used to communicate to turn away from the iceberg in the North Atlantic Ocean. Unfortunately, these commands came way too late as the ship struck the iceberg only 37 seconds after it was finally seen, and we all know what happened next. This telegraph was actually part of a Titanic auction that featured over 5,000 recovered artifacts that were selling for a combined some $200 million. In our number three spot today, we have the bell. The bell from the crow's nest of the Titanic was recovered from the wreckage and returned to land where it now resides in the Titanic Museum. The eerie story behind this bell is that it would have been the one that was rung three times by the lookout Frederick Fleet in order to attempt to warn of the iceberg that was ahead. Frederick, as well as the other lookout who was with him, Reginald Lee, both ended up thankfully surviving the incident and went on to later explain what happened from their point of view. They explained that if they had been given binoculars to assist with their job, they could have seen the iceberg sooner. When asked how much sooner, Frederick replied, well, enough to get out of the way. In our number two spot today, we have the big piece. This was a 15 ton section of the Titanic that ended up being recovered from the ocean floor. The wreckage of the Titanic was not found until 1985 when oceanographer Robert Ballard was doing a secret underwater expedition. The big piece is about 26 by 12 feet and it was once a section of the ship's starboard side hull. This piece also has a part of the original support beam that attached this piece to the frame of the ship. It is said that where this piece was located on the ship, basically everything else around it was absolutely obliterated when the ship split in two. This artifact is said to be the reminder of the most violent aspect of the sinking of the ship, which is a horrifying thought. It was found among many other smaller pieces of the ship that had all been broken up. In our number one spot today, we have this cherub statue. In the remnants of the Titanic, they recovered a broken cherub statue that once found its home on the grand staircase of the Titanic. Aside from cherubs just being kind of creepy in general, there's something exceptionally eerie about this piece of religious iconography being at the center of such a huge disaster, as well as being found among the wreckage 
years later. Cherubs are usually known as bearers of the throne or creatures who attend to God, so it's just a little creepy to have one at the scene of a terrible disaster, as well as it making through all of the years and years that the Titanic was underwater waiting to be found. Starting us off at number 10 is True North. Very few places on Earth will ever actually point to True North. What is True North? True North is the direction that points exactly towards the geographic North Pole. Being that there are next to no markers and obviously no landmarks in the middle of the ocean, when GPS and other high tech systems go awry, ships and other craft are forced to use their compasses as a way to stay on track. Compasses operate usually by pointing towards magnetic north, as the compass aligns with Earth's magnetic field. Magnetic north can shift depending on the change in the Earth's magnetic core, which operators and sailors are prepared for, thus creating a huge issue when operators and sailors traveling through the mysterious triangle discover that their compass is no longer working properly because it's pointing to true north instead of magnetic north. I'll be honest, it's been a while since I've ever had to use a compass and I think no matter what my compass reads, I would still be lost at sea. So Bermuda doesn't sound like the greatest vacay spot, but let's continue to see what's in store before we make up our mind. At number 9 we have the deepest spot on earth. So we always talk about how much we want to keep exploring space and we want to get to know our own universe, but you know what's really funny to me? We still have barely scraped the surface, or under the surface, for exploring our own ocean. One of those places being the Bermuda Triangle. The Bermuda Triangle is home to one of the deepest spots on Earth. Underneath the surface, the topography of the seafloor goes from a gentle sloping continental shelf to a drop of a few hundred feet to another drop of a few who knows how many thousand feet. Many disappearances that have been reported in the Bermuda Triangle could have their answers laying somewhere at the bottom of these deep trenches. But until we actually start exploring our oceans just as much as we explore space, just like whatever lays at the bottom, we will be left in the dark. At our number 8 spot we have methane gas. This gas is colorless, odorless, highly flammable and one of the main components in natural gas which we all use to generate electricity and heat our homes all around the world. But guess what? It's also in the Bermuda Triangle. Due to decomposing sea organisms, scientists have discovered large concentrations of methane gas trapped in the ocean floor. Methane accumulates as concentrated methane ice and if and when a pocket ruptures, the gas rockets upwards towards the surface without any warning or notice to those sailing above. If a ship were to be in the area of the blowout, it could possibly sink because the water would become much less dense and sediment could quickly cover it as the wreck lands on the sea floor. As of right now, there is no proof that this is the reason for any of the missing ships that have been reported in the Bermuda Triangle, but then again, how would we ever know? At our number 7 spot we have Rogue Waves. Now does that not sound like a great band name or what? Due to the location of the Bermuda Triangle in the Atlantic Ocean, storms can come from all directions. They can come from Mexico, from the equator, or the east side of the Atlantic. These storms of course make major waves reaching up to 30 feet or 10 meters tall, but what happens when they all come together at the exact same moment? These rogue waves can reach up to sizes of 100 feet or 30 meters tall. Engineers at the University of Southampton built models of different sized ships and simulated their own rogue waves in a wave tank for the small scale ships. What happened? These engineers discovered that these ships could indeed sink. The bigger the ship, the easier it was to sink because big ships are designed to be supported in the front by the top of a wave while the back is supported by another. But if hit by a rogue wave, those big ships, guess what? They snap in two. The small ones can sometimes survive if they hit the wave bow on, but most times will just get swallowed up completely. Rogue waves, hopefully not coming to an ocean near you. At our number 6 spot we have electronic fog. So far out of the many distress calls claiming to come from an electronic fog, these stories and events have been labeled as supernatural and not taken seriously. But there are reports from actual pilots who have flown through these strange phenomena and it's wild. Veteran pilot Bruce Gurdon reports that when he was flying with his father in his classic bonanza plane back in 1970, about 3 miles off Andros Island, an elliptical shaped cloud began forming in front of them. Before the father and son could escape the path of this mysterious cloud, they were engulfed and had a tunnel form all the way around them. And while in the cloud flying at 10,000 feet, they reported seeing lines and the tunnel spiraling counterclockwise while propelling them forward. They then started feeling the effects of zero gravity and all of their navigational systems started to fail. Fortunately, this electronic spiraling fog tunnel dissipated and they found themselves right over Miami Beach and were once again able to pick up radar. The next strange thing? They traveled 100 miles in 30 minutes less time than usual. Similar stories to Gurnan's have been reported as well but with no real answers to how or why. Some suspect it could be something related to the Hutchison effect, but as of right now the electronic fog, 
is still a mystery. Coming in at our number five midway spot is the once infamous mythical creature proven to be real, the giant squid. Aside from the many strange events and things found in the Bermuda Triangle, some have reported seeing a giant octopus or octopi if there are more than one. I wonder. Now, as of right now, there is no such thing as these creatures, but giant squid are indeed a real animal, and two Japanese scientists believe they caught one on camera. In 2005, two Japanese scientists spotted a giant squid aggressively taking baited lines. M normally, these creatures are not known to be in this area of ocean, but the footage says differently. These giant squid can reach up to 150 feet. Seeing the aggressive nature of this creature, as well as the size, it is no wonder some believe that they could be responsible for some of the disappearing ships. Speaking of, coming in in our top four spot, we have ships that have gone missing. As I said earlier, there are more than 50 ships that are reported to have gone missing in the Bermuda Triangle over the years. One of the most notorious ones being the USS Cyclops. One of the Navy's largest fuel ships went missing back in March 1918. This shop was carrying 10,800 tons of manganese ore with 309 crew members on board. Only one message was received from the ship during its voyage from Brazil to Baltimore, and it reported no trouble whatsoever while it was out on the sea. But then, it sailed through the Bermuda Triangle. The ship never made it to its destination, was never found. Not only was the ship never found, but also no debris or crew members either. There was no distress call received anywhere. One of the largest ships in the Navy and everything on board and everyone on board gone missing in a flash with no explanation? That's scary. Starting us off at our number three spot is planes gone missing. Over 20 aircraft just like ships have gone missing over the years and some of these reports are quite recent too. One of the latest being just last year in May when a small twin engine plane mysteriously went missing. Same thing as the USS Cyclops, those aboard started their flight with no complications whatsoever and there were no distress calls reported or anything out of the ordinary. Once again, no wreckage, crew or any signs of any explanation can be found. But maybe our next one on the list will help. At our number two spot, we have UFO sightings. If you've been keeping up to date with any of the alien news lately, you will know that there have been more than a couple of sightings all over North America in the last few years. One of them taking place over the Bermuda Triangle, April 28th, 2020, reported by not just anyone, but the United States Air Force. Many of the United States Air Force members have come out quite recently with more and more sightings, with some of them dating all the way back to the 1970s, right over top of the Bermuda Triangle. I hear more and more alien information every day and I am loving it. If I ever have a major reason to go to Bermuda, it's to see some aliens. Come on, who's coming with me? Finally, coming in at our number one spot is something we're going to have to grab our proton packs for because our final and weirdest thing found in Bermuda is ghost ships. Back in 1881, the infamous Ellen Austin ship experienced a ghost ship in an area of the Bermuda Triangle before things went awfully awry. The crew of the Ellen Austin discovered the ship fully stocked but with no crew on board or anywhere to be seen. Seeing an opportunity for a free ship with supplies, part of the Ellen Austin crew took over the ship and prepared to sail back with the ships side by side. Just then, an unexpected storm came out of nowhere and totally engulfed the two ships. After the storm was over the next day, both ships came out of the terror, but no crew was anywhere to be seen on the picked up ghost ship. Just then, crew members and captain of the Ellen Austin came aboard once again and then got swallowed up by a mysterious fog. And once the fog cleared, the ghost ship completely vanished along with everything and everyone. I hate to say it, but I guess that's karma. And she's always gonna come for you. Starting off at number 10 now, we have the Ice Finger of Death. This footage was captured by the BBC off the coast of Antarctica. A creepy, twisting column of ice reaches down to the sea floor and then begins to spread out, killing every living thing it touches. You can see it here just wiping out a whole colony of unwitting crabs. It's caused by new sea ice forming at the surface of the water that is so salty it begins to sink and freeze. This is called a brinicle. Now at first it baffled scientists and scared people who saw the footage with some people calling it slow lightning and wondering if larger versions could form that could actually threaten humans. For now though scientists are continuing to unpick this fascinating mystery and study the ice fingers of death. Moving on to the nine now we have the Millennium Falcon. In June 2011 a scan of the ocean floor near Sweden and Finland revealed something very strange. It looked, and there's no other way to say this, 
this like the Millennium Falcon spaceship from Star Wars. Don't believe me? Take a look for yourself. It was found at the bottom of the Baltic Sea and scientists were absolutely baffled. In the absence of any real answers, people just started coming up with their own theories which ranged from a simple rock formation to a crashed UFO. Eventually a team from Ocean X went down there to investigate. At first they thought it was just a stone cliff but as they approached it they realised it was more in the shape of a giant mushroom with rounded sides and rugged edges. It had an egg shaped hole at the top as well as strange circle formations that looked like small fireplaces. They were even covered in something that looked like soot. The team concluded that it must be a natural formation but they don't understand how it was formed. Especially because no volcanic activity has ever been reported in the Baltic Sea. Do any of you have any good theories? Next up at number 8 now we have the underwater pyramid. A few years ago a huge anomaly was found off the west coast of Mexico. To many people it looked like a pyramid but deep underwater. Now of course this caused an explosion online among UFO enthusiasts who believed it to be an ancient relic of an alien civilization. It was first spotted by UFO enthusiast Marcelo Igazusta who was using Google Earth to search for signs of global UFO activity. Now to this day you can still use his coordinates to go and see that feature on Google Earth. It's thought to be about 11 miles across which would make it about 10 times the size of the Great Pyramid of Cholula, the largest known pyramid structure on the planet to date. The area is a hotbed of volcanic activity and the feature may very well be a product of that but this hasn't stopped the UFO enthusiasts searching for more answers. Moving on to number 7 now we have the underwater rivers. In Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula lies a very interesting phenomenon, underwater rivers and they look like this. But how exactly does this happen? Well basically when a limestone bedrock collapses it sinks and forms a pit. This creates a reservoir that then fills up with a mixture of fresh and groundwater and salt water. Finally when organic matter ends up in there and decomposes it produces hydrogen sulphide which separates the fresh water at the top from the seawater below. Now all of this understanding is quite a recent thing. To the first divers that saw this it simply looked like an underwater river. Next up at number 6 now we have the Milky Sea. For centuries sailors who have been out to the most distant parts of the ocean kept reporting a mysterious phenomenon all over the world, the Milky Sea. Miles and miles of pale milky glowing water. When they returned many people didn't believe them or thought they were just mistaken. But in the modern era sailors are still reporting it. Finally in 2005 a group of scientists led by Dr. Stephen Miller of the Naval Research Laboratory in Monterey, California decided to investigate. They studied reported cases and found that on at least one occasion there was a bioluminescent bacteria in the water known as Vibrio harvei. In order for them. Now in order for them to cause the effects that have been described they would have to congregate in massive numbers and that is still very much a mystery. There are theories out there but the Milk Sea story is not over yet. And I think that's really cool. Moving on to number 5 now, we have Pavlo Petri. This is an ancient Greek city, thought to be over 5,000 years old. In 1000 BC, an earthquake resulted in the entire city being swallowed up by the sea. The area never re emerged again, and so it has been relatively well preserved. Entire roads, houses, gardens, temples, and cemeteries are almost as they were the day they were flooded. In 2009, scientists used sonar mapping techniques developed by the military to make Pavla Petri the first submerged town to be digitally surveyed in 3D. Now scientists have a big task ahead of them to figure out who these people were, what their lives were like and where did they go when their homes sunk beneath the waves. Next up at number 4 now we have the giant squid. For centuries sailors told tales of the kraken, an impossibly big squid like creature that lived at the bottom of the ocean only surfacing to smash up ships and drag sailors down to their watery graves. Although the kraken has now fallen into folklore a very real creature may have taken its place, the giant squid. It can grow up to 55 feet long and was never even photographed alive until 2004. Scientists know very little about this creature. They don't know its daily behavior patterns. They don't know whether it comes to the surface or remains deep at the bottom of the ocean all of the time. They don't know how fast it can swim, whether it uses its tentacles to catch prey. They don't even know what it eats or how long they live for. The giant squid may prove to be one of the last mysteries of the ocean, forever lurking below the 
depths of human knowledge. Moving on to number 3 now we have the immortal jellyfish. Some humans search for immortality. One species may already have the answer to that. The scientific name for this jellyfish is Turritopsis dorni. Its nickname is the immortal jellyfish. Just like every other living thing, it ages except when it comes to the point where it should start dying, the immortal jellyfish just says nah. It then reverts back to its sexually immature stage, essentially becoming a child again. Their tentacles retract, their bodies shrink, and they sink to the ocean floor to start their whole cycle all over again. Now, scientists still aren't sure about how the jellyfish are able to do this. That's one reason to study them. Another is that if we find out how they're doing this, we could use it to fight old age diseases in humans, or maybe even figure out immortality for ourselves. Do you think that's a good idea though? At the number two spot now, we have the purple orb. In 2016, the team operating the exploration vessel Nautilus came across a strange purple orb on the ocean floor off the coast of California and it appeared to be alive. The scientists were stumped. They had never seen anything like it before. They joked about it being a spider egg sac or a tiny mama octopus. They even nicknamed it Blobus Purpleus. And they weren't the only ones who were interested in it. A crab was there too. The crab was just knocking this purple blob around and the team had to basically prize it from its claws to retrieve it. After taking it back to a lab to study, scientists were very puzzled as to what exactly it was. After analyzing it though, they believed it to be a variant of a sea slug. A purple orb sea slug. And finally number one now we have the bloop. In 1997 the bloop sound was heard deep underwater in the Pacific by multiple listening stations that were thousands of miles apart. Take a listen to the famous bloop. What was that? It was a total mystery. What made the bloop sound? Theories started to arise. Many believed that it was made by a massive unknown animal that had been awoken at the bottom of the ocean. But what could make a noise that loud? After studying the noise, NOAA, the research group, had determined that the noise wasn't made by an animal, but rather a natural event instead. They believed that it was the cracking of an ice shelf breaking up in Antarctica that sent sound waves right through the Pacific. Now, of course, even to this day, Day, there's a hardcore group of people that still believe the bloop was definitely animal made. Kicking off the list at number 10, living fossils. Also referred to as crinoids, but living fossils sounds way better, definitely. These little guys went extinct 273 million years ago, or at least so we thought. We found these dudes this past year, and they're these non skeletal corals. They're cousins to starfish and sea urchins, but I gotta admit, they don't look nearly as cool. Starfish are the coolest, they're OGs. Discovered on the Pacific Ocean floor, this type of coral will attach itself to the stem of Japanese sea lily and then they just become one over time. Any type of ocean life that undergoes symbiosis, that creeps me right out. I don't like barnacles. I have a fear of the ocean and I'm super glad that we're doing this list. So let's move on as I get goosebumps. Oh, I hate this. Thalassophobia, I think, is like a fear of deep water. I have that. I also have a fear of shallow water. I can't swim. Number nine, Chuck Lagoon. This lagoon was Japan's main base during the war, but come 1944, the United States launched an attack, what some deem is Japan's Pearl Harbor, where 60 ships were sunk and around 250 planes went down. So for 70 years, there's been a massive graveyard sitting in the Pacific, and it wasn't until recently where we got a good look at these haunting artifacts. A photographer by the name of Super Jolly went down and did the dirty work for us. He called this shoot one of the scariest dives he's ever done in his entire life life. They described the atmosphere filled with human skulls, gas masks, and bullets as haunting. Yeah, you don't say. Nobody was expecting these artifacts to be that well preserved after all this time. That's the terrifying thing here. Photos are even still intact. You can see people's family members just sitting at the bottom. How sad is that? It's a haunting reminder of naval warfare, and also humans mostly suck. Number eight, MV Derbyshire. This ship was twice the size of the Titanic, but James Cameron didn't make a movie about it, so let me fill you in with less of a budget. MV Derbyshire was the biggest British registered merchant ship of all time to go down. That's an odd brag, but hear me out. She was assembled in 1976, but lost in 1980 en route from Canada to Japan. 
A Mayday distress call was never issued and it was following proper ocean routes with weather routing companies. So they were doing all the right things. What happened? September 15th, 1980, a search began for the missing ship and crew, but six days later, the search was called off. Nothing was found. The ship was declared lost. The sister ship of the Derbyshire ended up sinking as well later on in 1986 due to deck cracking. So the families urged officials to search again for answers. Come 1994, the Derbyshire was found. Number seven, garbage island. There's a lot of treasure in the sea, but there's also lots of garbage because humans suck. Sorry. I mean, look at the top of the Pacific for the example, not even below it, but right on the surface, we have something called the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. It's located safely in the North Pacific subtropical gyre. There's basically four of these large systems, which are just massive swirling ocean currents moving warm and cool water about. They're whirlpools of garbage now. No wonder aliens don't want to come. They're like, no, this looks like Let's just go to that planet. A plastic bag, for example, was found at the bottom of the Marianas Trench. We now have the deepest piece of trash. Kind of hard for Ariel to sing under the sea when she's got a plastic bag wrapped around her head. This great patch is larger than you think. It's more than twice the size of Texas. It's grown up to 60,000 square miles. Please recycle. Number six, Yanaguni Monument. This structure was discovered in the 80s near Yanaguni Island in Japan, and the claim is that this is an ancient city, or it was long ago. It's 160 feet long and 65 feet wide, and we're pretty torn over this one. Some think it's man-made, with the lines being so straight that it looks like paths were literally carved out. And I mean, to be fair, that looks like a little staircase. If this was on land, I'd be climbing all over it. I'd think it was made on purpose, some ancient jungle gym. But the fact that it's so deep underwater makes us think that it was a natural formation, obviously. No one's going down there like pickaxing, holding their breath. The footage of it is pretty incredible. If I were to come across this, there's no way I would believe that it's all natural. What do you guys think? Number five, holes. If you have trypophobia, you may want to look away for this next one. I have it, but I have a job to do, so I'll suffer. Off the coast of Big Sur, California, a survey revealed about 15,000 holes, and they're all roughly the same size. They all measure up to about 11 meters wide and one meter deep. The team at Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute found 15,000 of these, and then they found 5,000 more that are even bigger. The little guys are micro depressions and the big ones are called pockmarks. Initially, scientists thought methane under the sea floor was coming out to say hello and then they left a crater. Rovers went down there, tests were done, no methane. In fact, there hasn't even been any activity for 50,000 years. These craters are doing a pretty good job though when it comes to the ecosystem. Now there's deep sea creatures just living in them without paying rent, how rude. They even found a whale skull just laying in one. Imagine being a crab and coming home to that. Number four, USS Nevada. Deemed the unsinkable ship, and for good reason, the USS Nevada was lost in 1948, and it wasn't until a year ago where she was seen again. Unsinkable ship that sunk. What's, what's going on here? Well, during the 1941 surprise attack on Pearl Harbor, the USS Nevada was the only battleship to get away in one piece, but barely, they barely got away. It took years of repairs, but she finally returned to battle in 1944 to support the Normandy invasion. A year later, it assisted the invasions of Okinawa and Iwo Jima, and then two atomic bomb tests were performed, and then post-World War II, she was finally deemed too ancient for service. So the Navy used the USS Nevada as target practice, and it took five whole days and lots of power to finally sink it. A torpedo was the final strike. And after it sank, the Navy wasn't really sure where exactly it would end up. It was more than 15,000 feet below the surface, so it could have gone literally anywhere. Hence why we can't find anything else on this list. You get it. Cut to last year, May 2020, a joint expedition by Ocean Infinity and Search Inc. led by Dr. James Delgado found her. Just 65 nautical miles southwest of Pearl Harbor. It took a little while, but we got gotcha. you. Number three. Amelia Earhart. Yeah, you heard me, Amelia Earhart. The first woman to fly across the Atlantic was well on her way to setting even more groundbreaking records, but her plane tragically disappeared somewhere over the Pacific in 1937. It's since been a great mystery where the final resting place of Amelia Earhart is, but we may have actually found her remains back in 1940 on the Pacific island of Nikumaroro. The initial examination of these remains were reported to be that of a man, that was the general idea in 1941, but come 2018, however, we now have a different idea. 
science got better, our ideas got smarter. Researcher Richard Johns took another look at these lost remains, and since those days, we've learned more about Amelia Earhart. Photos have surfaced since, so now he's comparing the bone measurements to her body type, and they're actually pretty sure that that's our missing aviator. And that we had her the whole time, and we just didn't know. Number two, the Dragon's Triangle. The Dragon's Triangle is located in the Pacific, obviously, as are most of these, and it's like the evil sister of the Bermuda Triangle. And just like that triangle, this one also takes the blame for disappearing ships and planes, and apparently UFOs are flying about of course. It's referred to as the Devil Sea. These names are so scary sounding. Like, I don't know, change the names and maybe it won't be spooky anymore. Just an idea. There have been UFO sightings, magnetic anomalies, planes and ships vanish. In 1945, for example, a Mitsubishi A6M0 went missing and the pilot's distress call said the sky is opening up. Then they disappeared. 1955, a Japanese ship named the Shinyo Maru lost radio contact and it didn't take long for the New York Times to coin the term the Devil Sea. All these spooky triangles are ocean currents to blame or is there something truly paranormal about the Devil's Triangle? Let us know in the comments down below. See Illuminati confirmed. And finally, number one, crop circles. We'll finish this list off with a cute one, I guess. Although I'm arguing this is still pretty terrifying. Crop circles on the ocean floor, aliens confirmed. They were first spotted back in 1995 off the southern coast of Japan, and for 16 years, these things were blowing the minds of divers. Nobody knew where they were coming from. They would just be there one week and then gone the next. Tiny aliens or tiny puffer fish. That's right, in 2011, one of these dudes got caught in 4K, and it's one of the weirdest but most cute things I've ever seen. These male puffer fish, they try and lure in the ladies by making art. Yeah, some birds dance like crazy with their weird mouth looking wing things. Some fish make art, I don't know, deal with it. Animals are the thing that baffles me, concerns me if anything, is that the puffer fish uses a shell, like he uses a tool to carve out his emotions. Check this out. Number 10, Socotra Island. Socotra Island has been surrounded by mysteries and myths since the time it was discovered. Between the Horn of Africa and the Arabian Peninsula, the legends of the island date back all the way to ancient times. The reason it's so often spoken about is due to the strange abnormalities on the island. It's weird, and people like that stuff. That's why you're here. It is full of flora and fauna that don't exist anywhere else in the world. One of the most iconic trees is something called the dragon's blood tree. It kind of looks like somebody took like a evergreen tree and like shh, gathered all the pins and needles to the top and it's all veiny, it's so weird. Mysterious mists and bleach white sand flow over the isolated island in ways no one can explain. The island is also host to a wealthy collection of spiders, no thank you, reptiles and birds, many of which are native and endemic to the island. It certainly is like no other place on earth with many secrets still yet untold. Number nine, siphonophore. We know that there are some pretty gnarly creatures that live in the big blue and adding to that list, we have the siphonophore. For. This creature was discovered 2,000 feet below the Indian Ocean by a robot exploring a canyon. At first glance, it kind of looks like a piece of trash, maybe like a toilet brush attached to like a plastic bag or several. It has many working parts, all with a different job. It can even glow if it wants to. Some parts of its body can catch prey, digest food, reproduce, and others, of course, swim. Busy dudes. They can grow up to lengths of 40 meters, which is longer than a blue whale, which, by the way, is Earth's biggest animal. However, in terms of width, it's only about as wide as a broomstick. What's even crazier is that in 2020, the year when the world shut down, scientists still discovered the longest version, 150 meters, making it the longest creature ever discovered. Number eight, Mahabalipuram. The early life of Mahabalipuram is shrouded in mystery. Though it was once part of the Pallava dynasty that ruled over part of southern India between the 3rd and 9th centuries AD. But prior to this, legends allude to the first king Bali, Mahabali, a sacrificed himself to the fifth avatar of Vishnu, after which he became enlightened. Based on discoveries made by excavators, this spot was really active in the trade of goods and other artifacts, even having trade with the Romans. It was a hub of culture, art, and literature full of thriving life. One of the biggest attractions was the complex series of temples called the Seven Pagodas of Mahabalipuram. However, today, only one of the seven can still be seen as the others are submerged underwater. Other legends say that the god Indra became jealous of the architectural elegance and caused flooding in order to submerge the city, which may very well be the reason it's beneath the waves today, due to the wrath of the gods. Number seven, a mysterious chest. Where'd my scarf go? It's in the chest, it's in the ocean. Beneath the waves and the swells of the Indian Ocean, there's a mysterious chest that could contain treasure for all humanity, or evil. 
Who knows? Underwater snaps of the chest show that it belongs to a cargo ship from the 1800s. The trunk was discovered during a search for the missing MH370 flight that went missing, but they found two shipwrecks instead. So they're like, wow, shipwrecks, not people. At first, they got really excited when they came across the debris field, thinking that they had finally found the missing craft. But then they found out they were pirate ships and they're like, wow, exciting. Even more mysterious though is that the WA Maritime Museum has no records of the ships, thinking that it may have been a ship lost at sea and everybody died on board. However, whatever is in the chest remains to be seen and the search for the missing plane continues. Number six, the oldest tsunami victims. Over a thousand years ago on the east coast of Africa, there was a Swahili fishing village bustling and busy along their day. But then all of a sudden, a tsunami devastated the village. Based on findings published in National Geographic revealed a macabre discovery. They found a site in Tanzania that is the first and oldest tsunami deposit bearing human remains found in East Africa. The oldest human remains in a tsunami deposit was also found in the Indian Ocean just across the way in Papua New Guinea and is 7,000 years old. However, this tsunami doesn't appear to have been that big. But I mean, a tsunami is a tsunami, you know? It's a big deal, either way. But because the people lived so close to the ocean and they were on the other side of it, they would have had no warning. No earthquake to hear that it was coming. So, poor guys. Number five, the lost city of Krishna. For all the Atlantis fans out there, sadly it wasn't that. But just because it wasn't doesn't mean it wasn't, I don't know, cool. In my opinion, it's cooler because it's real. For a long time, people in India considered Laura Krishna's city of Dwarka a myth, until all of a sudden, it wasn't. Indian scientists finally discovered the lost city had been submerged off the northwestern coast of India. It is now one of the best studied underwater sites and has become a famous attraction. It is even considered one of the four dharmas, a sacred place of pilgrimage and worship. Lord Krishna founded the holy city and numerous stone structures still remain. Research suggests that it used to be the busiest port town before it sunk beneath the waves over four to 5,000 years ago. Number four, the Gondwana pieces. A mysterious ancient continent called Gondwana was discovered in the Indian Ocean and scientists were stoked. It was an ancient supercontinent formed over 500 million years ago. It broke up about 180 million years ago into the land masses that make up Africa, South America, Australia, Antarctica, the Indian subcontinent, and the Arabian Peninsula. Researchers are only discovering that there were microcontinents beneath basalt rocks when they found fossils. They were like, whoa, wait, animals used to live here? What is this thing? This discovery could mean that previously established beliefs about how the plate tectonics broke apart could be shattered, just like the continent was over hundreds of millions of years ago. Number three, a transformer. I feel like the ocean is a perfect spot for aliens to vacation, you know? Like why not? Tons of scenery, plenty of food, opportunity to pull pranks on humans. Why the heck not? It's perfect. So when this was discovered, everyone was shocked, except for me, because I don't know if I can be surprised on this channel anymore. When a new species turns up, the first thing the world says, it's aliens! But this very well may be a new creature in the crazy world that lives beneath the waves. However, you have to admit the footage is pretty bizarre. It looks like a creature is literally transforming itself 3,700 feet below. Check out this clip. At 45 seconds in, it just looks like it's having a grand old time floating, like wee! I'm going down. And then at one minute and 28 seconds in, it completely flips over and these little stripes of light reflect on its head. To me, it kind of looks like they are machine lights. It becomes more active and starts swimming around the craft almost as if it's teasing them. I don't know, friends. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. New octopus or alien friend? Both. Number two, Diego Garcia. Now I know this wasn't technically recovered, but it sure is terrifying. The island of Diego Garcia in the Indian Ocean has a murky and mystery past that the CIA doesn't like to talk about. It may have been their secret prison where they tormented their captives. The US government has persistently denied claims that it operated a secret war on terror within the confines of the island. But that wouldn't be the first time or last time they lied about something. A Swiss senator by the name of Dick Martin Marty was the one who produced a detailed report alleging the torment that happened on the island. Marty told the European Parliament, We have received concurring confirmations that United States agencies have used Diego Garcia, which is the international legal responsibility of the UK, in the processing 
of high value detainees. Processing was in quotations, so you can only imagine what that was hinting at. Number one, a mysterious glow. The Milky Sea has been a phenomenon for ages, but as of yet, no one has quite been able to explain it. Jules Verne even wrote about the Milky Sea in his famous novel, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. The legend of the Milky Sea became just that when sailors would come in from sailing. They'd be like, whoa, did you check out this weird sea that we came across? It was crazy. But they'd be like, dude, you're nuts. Even in modern times, scientists dismissed it because the level of bacteria needed to create that would be colossal and they considered that impossible. Yet it exists. Essentially, it's a glowing part of the Indian Ocean with an unknown source which remains under debate. The leading theory is that it has to do with a large collective of bioluminescent fish plankton hanging about. The reason it was proven was that Steve Miller checked a British merchant vessel that reported seeing it in January 25th, 1995. And I quote, On a clear moonless night while 150 nautical miles east of the Somalian coast, a whitish glow was observed on the horizon and after 15 minutes of steaming, the ship was completely surrounded by a sea of milky white color. It appeared as though the ship was sailing over a field of snow or gliding over the clouds. Miller used the Defense Meteorological Satellite Program, DMSP, and its polar orbiting satellites to detect this ethereal event. He matched the coordinates recorded by the ship to the date, and then he found it when he actually just waited and watched for it. The glowing spot spanned 15,400 kilometers of glowing Indian Ocean for three nights in January. At number 10, we have an octopus nursery. Eight legged alien looking things with suction cups all over their arms and beaks for mouths. Octopus are creepy looking things, and to top it all off, they can camouflage like a Navy SEAL and they are super smart. If these are the kind of things that make your skin crawl, then just running into one of these guys would probably freak you out. Well, on the underwater expedition at the Davidson Seamount, there was a rather shocking discovery. They had a remote probe that was on the ocean floor around 10,000 feet and they came across which seemed to be an octopus that was next to not just one, not just two, but a group of 1,000 octopuses in a nursery. They were all there laying their eggs and using the heat from the volcanic vent to keep them warm. I would hate to be the guy who accidentally steps into that crack and then gets devoured by thousands of sticky arms. But if you're at 10,000 feet underwater, you probably are already screwed. At number nine, we have the Siberian Lake Monster. Of course, if we're doing a list of scary things that live underwater, we have to throw a giant mysterious sea monster on here. What separates the Siberian Lake Monster from other more popular guys that we have seen like Loch Ness and that kind of stuff is that underwater scans have actually picked this guy up. This thing is deep in Lake Lavinkure and some radar has shown that it looks like a 33 foot long creature is living there. Now this is probably just a skeleton, but if this thing is dead, it means that there was once a giant man eating monster in this lake. I thought we were supposed to be safe in freshwater. They've nicknamed this thing the devil, so you know he's a good time and loves company. So next time you go up to the cottage and you're swimming in the water and you feel safe, remember there might be a giant monster lurking underneath the water ready to turn you into a side dish. At number 8 we have the blue hole. Now there are several blue holes in the world. There's one in Belize, there's one in the Red Sea, there's a giant one in my heart that was left there from when Reboot ended on a cliffhanger. How are you going to end a show that's so many people fell in love with on a cliffhanger. I will never trust again. Well this one is between Cape Verde and the Caribbean islands. Scientists are really confused about this thing. It's a crack in the bottom of the ocean floor and it's several thousand miles long. What's strange about this is there's no explanation of how this happened. It might have been tectonic plates moving around, but when this happened the earth will probably start to repair itself and there's been no sign of this. My theory is this is where Godzilla goes to sleep at night. I mean it seems like the most logical answer. It's either that or the game way to hell. Like come on guys, I'm doing real science work here. At number 7 we have the Yanaguni Complex. This was discovered by scuba divers in the 1980s. I think that's the scariest part about this one. Could you imagine going scuba diving back in the 80s? The technology back then must have been a tube going up to some guy who would blast fresh air down to you using a bicycle pump. I don't even think they had decompression sickness figured out back then. The chances of you coming up the bends was probably super high. Well if it wasn't for a few divers in Japan who were willing to sacrifice at all to look at some cool stuff, we wouldn't know anything about the Yanaguni complex. It's still a mystery as to what this thing is. It looks like some temples that might have existed thousands of years ago, but when the Ice Age decided to melt, it would have covered this entire area. This could be why an entire civilization got plunged underwater. Or the temple could have been on a cliff, 
and then when a massive earthquake hit, it knocked the temple into the water. But like everything in life, there are some haters who say this whole thing is just a natural rock formation. Some people just want to ruin everything. At number 6 we have Anacora Sista Twista. One of the reasons why the underwater world is such a mystery is because we find things like this in there. Sure there are beautiful things down there like bright fish and chubby marine mammals, but there's also the unknown unidentified organisms like Anacora Sista Twista, which should be the name of an 80s hair metal band. But what is this thing? Well it's a protist. And what is a protist you may ask? Well it's an organism that doesn't belong to any animal group, fungus or plant group. What does that mean? I really have no idea you guys. I think it means it could be an alien. Some alien came down to earth for a swim and then scraped its knee on some coral and now we have alien creatures running around the ocean. Probably waiting for you to pee so it can swim up your pee hole and then work its way into your brain. It's really the only logical answer. At number 5 we have the Bimini Road. How were the pyramids made? Was it aliens coming down to share their technology and secrets with us or was it just thousands upon thousands of slaves who sacrificed their lives and their spines to build them? Well we don't know and we may never know but the Bimini Road is another one of these mysteries. It's off the coast of the Bahamas and it looks like it could have been a pathway that was placed perfectly with giant slabs of rock. Similar to the way the pyramids were made, it seems that these large slabs of rock were too large to be moved by man and also like the pyramids, these giant slabs were also perfectly placed so well. So where does everyone's mind go when something like this happens? Well, magic or aliens. The logical answer is that this is a natural phenomenon of the water moving and hitting the rocks to make these formations, but people think that this was made using advanced technology from aliens and could have been the road to Atlantis. Honestly, I like the Atlantis theory much better. It's more fun. At number 4 we have Colossal Squid. Yeah this thing is a big no thanks for me. So everyone always talks about how there might be sea monsters out there, but this thing actually exists. There's never been one caught alive, but several have washed onto shores dead. And they are massive. The largest one ever discovered was 45 feet long and it was dead. So you know there was an even bigger one out there that killed this guy. They don't even have suckers on their tentacles, they have hooks. Let me say that again. This squid has 10 giant arms covered in hooks. This thing is straight out of a horror movie. Scientists aren't even sure what something this big eats. They think it probably feeds on whales or your deepest darkest fears. I wouldn't be surprised if the colossal squid works part time as a gatekeeper for hell. It makes me think that the old greek stories about the kraken might have been real. At number 3 we have underwater circles. Giant formations of circles that are formed underwater and nobody knows how they got there. These mysteries were discovered off the coast of North Carolina, Florida and Belize. Now what are they? Like many things on this list, myself and the entire scientific community have no idea. But here are some theories. Maybe they were formed naturally by either two things, water currents or some sort of animal mating ritual. Another idea is that these things were made by ancient civilizations before the ice age. All these things would have been above ground and might have been art left over by some old timey tribes. And the third theory is that they look kind of like a bullseye so it might be some sort of nuclear missile target and if you hit it hard enough the explosion will cause some sort of major natural disaster like an earthquake or tsunami or if we're lucky, both. At number 2 we have Megalodon. If you have a fear of sharks you're gonna love this one. Megalodon was a prehistoric shark that was even bigger than the giant hook tentacle beast that was earlier on this list. If you've already forgotten about the colossal squid, it clocked in at around 45 feet long, where Megalodon was closer to 60 feet long. It was a 60 foot shark that could probably rip a blue whale in half in one bite. Well maybe not that, but it was still a gargantuan creature with teeth the size of Brock Lesnar's fists. This thing wouldn't even chew you, it would just swallow you whole and then fart your skeleton out into the dark cold ocean. At number 1 on our list we have Giant Eyeball. A mysterious giant eyeball washed onto the shore of a Florida beach back in October of 2012. I don't know any other kind of giant eyeball other than a mysterious one. There's no super common regular giant eyeball just lying around. But this is also Florida. This is the state where people smoke crack at weddings and kiss alligators on the lips. So maybe it's a little more common over there. Well this giant eyeball was found by Gino Cavacci and he didn't know what the hell to make of it so he took it home and then stuck it in his freezer. Then he called the cops and the cops came in and told him we don't do giant eyeballs on the beach. You have to call the wildlife people. And then he called the wildlife people and they were like what the hell is that? And he was like I don't know I brought it to you guys to try and figure out what it is. And then some people were like maybe it's a sea monster and other people were like no it's probably from a marlin. And I think in the end 
no one really knew what the hell it was. But just so you know, there's giant eyeballs out there just laying around the beach sometime. Starting off this countdown, we have the HMS Sea Serpent. In August of 1848, the crew on the HMS Daedalus was sailing in the South Atlantic when they spotted this terrifying creature. According to the ship's captain and several members of the crew, they claimed that the monster was 60 feet in length with four feet of his head raising out of the water. This massive sea beast lurked around the ship for 20 minutes before taking off. To this day, we don't know what it is that they saw. They described it as being a long snake with a dragon's head. Pretty weird and creepy, right? Well, they aren't the only ones who witnessed this too. It was spotted a second time by the American Brig Daphne. And in fact, crew on board even shot at it. Scientists claim that maybe they just saw a whale. But come on, a bunch of experienced sailors would know the difference between a whale and something that's not a whale. And at number nine today, we have the Mary Celeste. And if you guys are liking this video so far, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. To this day, the mysterious case of the Mary Celeste is considered one of the creepiest cases in nautical history. Basically, in 1872, the Mary Celeste was found abandoned in the middle of choppy waters. The crew was nowhere to be found. All the cargo on board remained untouched. Now, the lifeboats were missing, which makes people believe that the crew tried to get off the ship and flee. But why would they just abandon their ship like that? Well, we got a number of theories. One, a sea monster got them. Two, a pirate takeover occurred. Three, they were abducted by aliens, or four, they consumed bad food and they all went mad. I know, it seems wild. To make matters weirder though, the crew and lifeboats were never found. No one knows what happened aboard that ship. In our eighth spot, we have the Baltic Sea Anomaly. In 2011, a group of divers went out looking for treasure in the Baltic Sea, and they came across something weird. It was a 70 meter long weird object laying 300 feet below sea level. This thing has since been named the Baltic Sea Anomaly, and no one knows what the heck it is. It's just this massive steel looking structure shaped like a disc with some weird patterns on it. Gets weirder when the divers claim their equipment randomly stopped working when they got closer to the object. There was a massive electrical interference there. So what is this thing? Honestly, we don't know. But some people think it's a glacial deposit left from thawing glaciers. Or it's part of a UFO spacecraft from one extreme to another. Could be either or, who knows. In our seventh spot, we have the three men. In 2007, three Australian men headed out on an expedition together. Three days later, their ship was found drifting by itself in the middle of the ocean. The men were nowhere to be found. That's not all. On the ship, they found knives all over the cabin floor, as if there had been a fight and people were scrambling for weapons. What happened to these men still remains a mystery to this day. But of course, we got the theories. One is that they got into a devastating fight and they all ended up dying. Or two, their propeller became snarled in a fishing line. One dude went to go free the line, but then fell into the ocean. The second dude tried to save him and then fell in as well, and then so on with the third guy, or who even knows. Okay, we don't know for sure, that's just a theory. The only thing we do know is that this case is pretty creepy. Moving on to number six, we have the Kraken. So it may just be that the Kraken is real but it's not what we think it is. In fact, the legend of the Kraken was thought to have been born after a number of sailors spotted giant squids while sailing. So the Kraken might actually just be giant squids. In 1870, a giant squid washed up in New Zealand. Legend goes that it was as tall as the top of a ship's main mast, and it could easily take over a ship by wrapping its tentacles around the hull and crushing it. Is this true? Who knows? But no one believed that giant squids were real until around 2005. That's when scientists caught a photo of one. Then in 2013, they got a video of one. Now they believe there are millions of giant squids out there. The mystery here is, what beast did the sailors encounter in 1870? Was it a ginormous squid, or was it a kraken, or is a squid a kraken? Who even knows, okay? There's just so many questions out there that we need answers to. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the cursed shipwreck. 
Back in the early 2000s, a natural gas company was laying pipeline in the ocean when they came across a shipwreck. Nowadays, this shipwreck is considered cursed or haunted. Let me explain why. So after the shipwreck was discovered, a team was sent down there to check it out. But everything that could go wrong did. First, the exploration sub malfunctioned right as it was getting ready to explore the wreck. Then the Navy sent a research sub down there and it literally self-destructed upon entering the water. Then over the course of a couple of years, other attempts have been made to explore the ship, but those have gone wrong as well. None have been successful. So now it's believed that this ship is cursed and doesn't want anyone entering it. In our fourth spot, we have the disappearing submarines. In 1968, four different submarines all mysteriously went missing. As a result, people believe that this can no way just be a coincidence. Something was out there sinking these subs. The subs were the USS Scorpion, the Soviet submarine K-129, a French submarine Minerve, and the INS Dakar. In fact, the French sub and the INS Dakar disappeared only four days apart. The French submarine has still never been found. What's weird is that it disappeared only an hour away from its port. So you think they'd be able to track it down, but nope. So what are the odds that four massive submarines go missing the exact same year? What could have caused this? We'll probably never know. In our third spot, we have Sylvester Butler Jr. Apparently a number of people mysteriously vanish off of cruise ships each year. Most of them have never been found. Today, let's look at the weird case of Sylvester Butler Jr. In May of 2017, Sylvester boarded a cruise ship headed to the Pacific Islands. While on board though, the crew noticed he was acting weird. He kept to himself, barely talked to anyone else, and housekeeping claimed that he never unpacked his bags. The only charge on his bill was the occasional soft drink he would order to his room. Also, every time the cruise made a stop, he never left the ship. Then somewhere between Fiji and the final port Sydney, crew noticed that he was missing. No one knows what happened to him. And the ship's CCTV footage revealed nothing. It's sad, but theory goes that Butler jumped off the ship and took his own life. Apparently he suffered from a chronic genetic kidney disease. So maybe he wanted to end his suffering, but we don't know for sure. On top of that, I believe that his body was never found. Coming in our second spot today, we have the Stronse Beast. The Stronse Beast is the name given to a massive carcass that washed ashore on Stronse Island on September of 1808. At first, people thought it was just the body of a shark, but this creature had paws instead of fins. So then people were hella confused. Not only that, but it was 55 feet long. But part of its tail was missing, so clearly this thing was even bigger than that. This beast was described as follows, and I quote, its flesh was described as being like coarse, ill-colored beef, entirely covered with fat and tallow, and without the least resemblance or affinity to fish. The skin, which was gray colored and had an elastic texture, was said to be about two inches thick in parts." End quote. Not only that, but its bristles glowed in the dark when wet, and the contents in its stomach were red. So what is this beast? The Natural History Society of Edinburgh believes that it is a sea serpent of some sorts. Maybe the Loch Ness Monster or its long lost brother, who knows. And in our number one spot today, we have the Oorang Madon. So this next mystery is pretty freaking creepy, I'm not gonna lie, it's gonna keep you up at night. So in 1947, two American ships received a distress call from the ship the Oorang Madon. The SOS call was from a crew member that stated everyone on board the ship had died. Then all of a sudden, his SOS ended with his last message being, I die. When the ships arrived, they found the ship completely unharmed. The entire crew, including a dog on board, had died. Everyone had a terrified look plastered on their face. No one knows what happened to the ship. Theory goes though that maybe they were exposed to some dangerous gas and died. That seems to be the most common theory out there. In our number 10 spot today, we have the upsweep. We all know how little we know about the ocean, and that includes what kinds of creatures lie in it. So while this mysterious sound out of context probably wouldn't be that freaky, when put into this situation, it becomes quite a bit more eerie. This sound is referred to as upsweep, and it was caught when the Pacific Marine Environmental Laboratory started its sound surveillance system in August of 1991. The sound is apparently more seasonal, with its peaks in space 
spring and fall, but it is unclear if the changing of seasons is responsible for this sound or if it's coming from something that lurks in the ocean and remains undiscovered. Just for reference, here is a clip of that sound played at 20 times the original speed. It is possible that this sound could be coming from underwater volcanic activity, but considering the fact that this has yet to be proven, I am here to ask the question, what if it's not? In our number 9 spot today we have Bermija. Bermija was an island that could be found on many maps spanning from the 16th to the 20th century, but in a 1997 survey, the island could not be located. In an extensive 2009 study, it was concluded that the island that was once labeled as Bermija just didn't exist, which left a whole host Host of questions. The island was supposed to be located just off of the north coast of the Yucatan Peninsula, which is particularly important because if it did exist, its location would be integral to determining the boundaries for exploitation rights of oil in the Gulf of Mexico. So of course when this island that's been included on many maps seemingly just doesn't exist anymore, people really began to speculate what could have happened. There are a few major theories with this one. The first is that the original observation of the island was incorrect and then no one ever went to double check that this island existed. The next being that possible shifts in the geography of the ocean floor along with rising sea levels were the cause for this island to completely disappear. The third theory is the most mysterious out of them all and this is the theory that the island was blown up by the CIA so as to expand the economic zone belonging to the United States. It certainly is not an easy thing for an island to just disappear so it truly is quite a large mystery about what exactly happened here and at this point, it is unclear if we'll ever know for sure. In our number 8 spot today, we have the Sarah Joe. The Sarah Joe was a fishing boat that departed from Maui in February of 1979. There were five crew members aboard the boat, and when they left around 10 a.m. that day, the skies were perfectly clear, but while they were out at sea, the wind began to change and they ended up encountering a horrible storm. People on shore who were rightfully worried about the crew headed to the shoreline to try and wave the boat back in, but they were unable to locate the boat at all. One of the passengers fathers even went out on a separate boat in the middle of the storm to try and see if anything could be done or if he could at least locate the ship but to no avail. It was presumed that all of the crew members had been lost due to the severity of the storm. The following days of course consisted of many hours of searching but neither the ship or any of the men were located. Flash forward almost an entire decade to September of 1988 and a member of the initial search team, John Naughton, was on a wild wildlife expedition on a deserted atoll around 2,000 miles from Maui when he discovered a small boat and a makeshift grave. He left the site as untouched as he could and immediately contacted authorities who were then able to confirm that the boat was the Sarah Joe and the person buried in the makeshift grave was one of the passengers who went missing all those years ago. While experts do agree that the boat could have drifted here and it would have only taken about three months to do so, this area was surveyed in 1980 and there was no trace of either the boat or the makeshift grave. So where would the boat and this crew member have been from the 1979 disappearance until after the 1985 survey? These are the types of questions that still remain unanswered to this day. There are of course theories but none that cover all the mysteries this story holds. In our number 7 spot today we have the Yonaguni Monument. Just off of the coast of Yonaguni in Japan there is a diving location that has a high population of hammerhead sharks making it a large and popular attraction. In 1986 a diver in the area noticed some formation on the seabed that resembled a structure of some sort. This led to a team of scientists going on a dive to gather more information and this is when the Yonaguni Monument was officially discovered. The monument is made of sandstone and mudstones but here's the mysterious thing. Scientists can't agree on its origins. There are some who believe that this is a natural formation, but there are some who swear that it is man-made. The stairs are over 165 feet long and 65 feet wide, which obviously means that they are strikingly huge. There are pretty reasonable arguments for both sides, and considering the fact that this thing is at least 10,000 years old, I guess it's fair that we may not have all the answers, but it certainly is strange that we can't quite figure it out. At the end of the day, I really don't want to meet whatever thing would need stairs this large. 
In our number 6 spot today we have the Milky Sea Phenomenon. This phenomenon is certainly much more beautiful than the name would suggest, and while we kind of know what causes it, there are still many, many unanswered questions that surround it. The first recorded sighting of this phenomenon occurred in 1846 when Raphael Semmes, who was the captain of the CSS Alabama, spotted it and was horrified by what he was seeing. He wrote, From the deep blue water into a patch of water so light it startled me. The whole face of nature seemed changed and with a little stretch of the imagination, the Alabama might have been conceived to be a phantom ship lighted up by the sickly and unearthly glare of a phantom sea. This phenomenon is so bright that it can be seen from the satellites orbiting Earth, and while it looks amazing in pictures, I can only imagine how frightening it would be to see in person when little is known about why it happens. It is believed that the glow is caused by bioluminescent bacteria that grows in all oceans in our world, but in order to produce a glow like we've seen, this bacteria has to be multiplied by billions of trillions, and we don't know how or why this happens. Also, we don't know for sure if that is what is responsible for the glow, it's just our current best guess. Just for the sake of our expansive imaginations, let's say that it really is this bacteria causing the glow. Why does it come to the ocean surface? Why in such great numbers? Every time this happens, it's at unpredictable times, locations, and sizes, so basically, it remains a strange but stunning ocean mystery. In our number 5 spot today we have the SS Beichimo. The SS Beichimo was built in Sweden in 1914 and it belonged to the Hudson's Bay Company. This ship was used to trade provisions for pelts in Inuit settlements along the northwest territories of Canada. On October 1st, 1931, the ship was ending its trading run and was packed with fur when it became trapped in pack ice. The crew decided to briefly abandon the ship and they travelled over the ice to the nearest town for shelter. Because of the location and the time, it wasn't exactly going to be simple for everyone to be rescued. On October 15th, the Hudson's Bay Company sent an aircraft to save 22 of the members, but 15 remained and began to prepare in case they needed to stay the winter. Because the ship couldn't be heated, the remaining crew members would return to the ship every few days to chip away some of the ice, but also to grab essential items from the ship. On November 24th, there was a powerful storm, and once it had cleared, the Beichima was gone. The remaining crew assumed that it had sunk, but this is really where our mystery gets started. An Inuk hunter spotted the ship around 72 miles from the camp the remaining crew members had set up, and somehow they ended up locating it, removing the rest of the valuables, and then abandoning it for the last time because it was believed that this ship wouldn't last the rest of the winter. After the rest of the crew was finally rescued, the ship ended up being spotted around 480 miles from its previous sighting. For 40 years after, the Beichima was frequently spotted floating in different locations, sometimes even providing people with shelter during storms, but was never once captured. In 2006, the Alaskan government began to work on a project to find the Beichimo, but since the most previous sighting, she has never been located again. While the ship is now presumed sunken, it would have been the longest sailing ghost ship of all time. Ships rarely survive for nearly as long while being unmanned, especially in the crushing icy waters. We still haven't found the wreck of this ship either, so perhaps it is still out there floating somewhere. In our number 4 spot, today we have the Devil's Sea. The Devil's Sea is like the Bermuda Triangle of the Pacific as it lies in the region just south of Tokyo. This area is often thought as some sort of a paranormal area because of the consistent horrible happenings that occur in it. This area is one of the 12 vile vortices in the world, with the Bermuda Triangle being the most famous one. Above the Devil's Sea, planes are known to seemingly just drop out of the sky like something is reaching up and grabbing them. Methane deposits cause large explosions in the area, and during World War II, this area was the site of over 20 missing submarines. There have also been numerous ships, some twice the size of the Titanic, who have gone missing without a trace after sailing through the Devil Sea. This is all to say that while we don't really know what lurks in this area, it's probably safest to just stay the heck away from it. In our number 3 spot today, we have the Cassie Nicole. The Cassie Nicole was a boat that set sail from Richmond Hill, Georgia on April 10, 1990, with four people on board. During the second day aboard, one of the passengers realized that the boat was suddenly taking on water, and at this same time, the pumps and radio were not working, which left them with little to no options. The crew decided it was time to board a life raft and abandon ship. After a day of floating on this life raft, one of the passengers named Nathan saw the ship's hatch cover floating by them and thought that it might be able to support him better. Once he hopped onto the cover, he ended up losing sight of the other three crew members. Later in the day, he saw a freighter go by multiple times, and he was hoping that it had picked 
up the three crew members he had lost contact with. After three days of floating at sea, Nathan was finally rescued, but he received the news that the other crew members hadn't been found. Months went by with no sign of the others until a few months later when Nathan's sister, as well as the owner of the boat, began receiving strange phone calls from someone who was speaking in Spanish. The person on the other line said their name as well as the names of the missing people, and in the final phone call the stranger said, in English, I'm bringing them home, but there has still never been a sign of them. The family of the disappeared men believe that they may be alive somewhere but are being held in a foreign country, but why? And why would someone say that they were bringing them home only to not do that? In our number 2 spot today we have the loneliest whale. This whale has been nicknamed the loneliest whale in the world, but the truth is, we don't really know if that's true because we've never actually seen it. This whale, which we don't know if it's a male or a female, or what whale species it belongs to, sings its song like no other whale does. The whale was first heard in 1989 on a hydrophone, and while the calls were most similar to that of a blue whale, there was one striking difference and that was the frequency of the calls. This whale calls at 50 2 hertz with regular blue whales calling between 10 and 40 hertz. Even fin whales are usually heard at 20 hertz, so it's just left everyone stumped as to what could be going on here. A researcher named Bill Watkins dedicated his life to trying to reveal what exactly is going on here, and while he passed away in 2004, he found that this whale was not only unusual, but totally unique. The biggest challenge is the fact that we cannot locate this whale. Their calls can be heard for hundreds of miles, and trying to find one single whale in the vastness of the ocean is next to impossible. Many people have suggested that perhaps the whale is deaf and this is what has led to its unique song, but of course without the whale, how could we possibly know for sure? In our number 1 spot today we have the French Sailors. Yves Emmanuel Payne and Laurent Hernas were French sailors who were hired to sail a boat to its new owners. Their trip would see them departing from Annapolis, Maryland and heading to Guadalupe, but when they never arrived at their destination, searches quickly began. Unlike many of the other stories similar to this one, there were actually sightings of this ship, most of them occurring along the intercoastal waterway which was far off from the course the ship was intended to take. Along with these sightings came the frightening news that the witnesses claimed to see a third man on the boat which made people begin to believe that it had been hijacked, which wouldn't have been all that surprising considering the state of the art vessel they were on. Despite these sightings, the boat was never found and neither were the men. To add even more strange occurrences to this story however, around two months after the disappearance, a police officer in South Carolina pulled over a speeding car. After a sort of strange encounter with those in the vehicle, it was later discovered that two of the three men in the car were the missing Yves Emmanuel and Laurent, but at this point, they have course had already been released. What exactly happened here has never been fully discovered despite this all happening in 1991. Were the sailors kidnapped? Were they part of an elaborate plan to steal the ship despite their loved ones saying that they would never do such a thing? It all remains a mystery. Starting off this countdown we have the giant cannibal shark. Sounds like something straight out of a horror movie. Honestly, maybe it is. So in 2003, scientists tagged a nine foot long great white shark. They did this in order to study the temperature changes in the ocean. Here's the thing. Several months later, the tag washed up on shore. The shark, nowhere to be seen. They checked the information on the tag and that's when they were shocked. About four months after the tag was put on the shark, it dove to around 1900 feet. They believe that's because the shark was attacked and eaten by something. But what creature in the ocean is going around eating a 9 foot long bright white shark? They still don't know. It could be a massive sea creature that we haven't found yet. Or they think it might be an even bigger shark, making it a massive cannibal shark. If you're not afraid of the ocean yet, then this for sure has done it for you. Coming in at number 9, we have the lost city of Atlantis. There is a city that lies sunken underwater just off the coast of the Japanese island Yonaguni, making it Japan's very own Atlantis. Many people believe that the city is around 5,000 years old. There are complete pyramids, ruins of castles, structures etched with faces, and rock sculptures that look like animals all underwater. It's theorized that a terrible earthquake caused the city to be engulfed by water. But to this day, we don't know the true origins of this mysterious underwater city. Conspiracy theorists believe that the CIA destroyed this island in order to expand America's economic zone. Unless we travel back in time, there's no way to find out more about the city and what happened to it. Coming in at number 8, we have Carol A. Deering. 
aka the ghost ship of the Outer Banks. So on January 31st, 1921, the Carol A. Deering was found abandoned off of Cape Hatteras in North Carolina. The crew was nowhere to be found. On top of that, tons of stuff was missing from the ship, including the crew's personal belongings, life rafts, logbooks, and navigational equipment. To this day, no one knows what happened to the crew aboard the ship. But of course, we got some theories. Theory one is that a mutiny occurred. Theory two is that they were ransacked by pirates. Theory three is that they were taking part in rum running. People stole the ship to use for the rum running. And when they were done, they just abandoned the ship and left it there. But like I said before, we don't know for sure. In our seventh spot, we have the electronic fog. Okay, this one is pretty weird, not gonna lie. So on December 4th, 1970, a man named Rob McGregor was flying over the Bermuda Triangle when he was met by this weird tunnel-shaped vortex. He entered it and apparently his wings sounded like they were scraping along metal. All of the electronic and magnetic navigational instruments malfunctioned. When he looked up, all he saw was a dull gray fog. Also, there were strange clouds forming behind the airplane. They were only in the clouds for a couple of minutes, but claimed that they traveled for 40 minutes. When they got out of the fog, they were over Miami Beach, a flight that would have taken 75 minutes. He believes that this weird fog is what has caused other planes and boats and passengers to disappear in the Bermuda Triangle. So what is this weird electronic fog that he encountered while over the ocean? That's something I want to know. In our sixth spot today, we have the time travel. Legend goes that one day, three ships were traveling through the Bermuda Triangle. Everything was going fine until they encountered a mysterious fog. When they emerged through the other end of the fog, there were only two ships. The other ship was way ahead of them. The crew aboard the ship claimed that the fog transported them back in time several years. There, they saw a bunch of different boats and passengers also sailing. Then they approached the same fog and they got transported back to the current day. Isn't that weird? Was this the same fog the pilot encountered? Like, what is going on in the ocean? We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the disappearance of Keith Davis. Now, this case is certainly going to keep you up at night, so just a little warning. So in 2015, Keith Davis, a fisheries observer, headed out to sea with his crew. His job was to monitor all the catches and collect data on it. But about a month later, Keith disappeared off the ship in the middle of the day, in broad daylight. He has never been found. On top of that, the weather that day was calm, and he was an experienced observer. So it's not like he just fell overboard by accident. So what happened to him? Well, theory goes that he knew too much, so someone got rid of him. When police searched his email, they found photographic evidence of illegal things happening on board these ships, like they were allegedly smuggling people. He was also keeping track of a number of rule violations. Not only that, a year before his disappearance, Keith sent a mysterious email to his friends. In the email was a video of four men being shot to death while holding onto debris in the ocean. So theory goes that Keith was killed for knowing way too much. But still, to this day, we don't know exactly what happened to him. Coming in at number four, we have the Ellen Austin. In 1880, a ship named the Ellen Austin set sail to New York from Liverpool. During their travels, the crew spotted a ship floating near the Bermuda Triangle. They approached it and found that nothing was wrong with the ship, but all the crew on board were missing. So they decided to put some of their own crew members on board this mysterious ship and have it come with them. But during the trip, the two ships got separated. They were separated for a couple of days before the Ellen Austin spotted the ship once again. However, all their crew on board vanished. There was no trace of them. Now the story goes on saying that they placed another set of crew members aboard the ship and once again, the exact same thing happened to those men. They disappeared off the ship without a trace, but that account hasn't been confirmed. Either way, this mystery gave birth to an urban legend. Basically, a cursed ghost ship lurks the waters near the Bermuda Triangle. Those who hop on board will mysteriously disappear without a trace. In our third spot, we have the disappearing aircrafts. In 1945, five torpedo bomber planes took off for a three-hour exercise. But while flying over the Atlantic Ocean, they disappeared without a trace. It all started when the flight's leader noticed that his compass wasn't working properly. So he was worried that they were flying in the wrong direction. He instructed the planes to then change paths, thinking that they were going to then be heading towards Florida. 
but in reality, they were just traveling deeper into the Atlantic. As the planes started getting close to the Bermuda Triangle, their signals began to fail. The last few things the pilots ever said were, and I quote, everything looks strange, even the ocean, and it looks like we are entering white water were completely lost. Then the communication was cut completely and they were never heard from again. In our second spot, we have the severed feet. What would you do if you were out on a nice stroll on the beach when you came across someone's missing arm or foot? Believe it or not, this has happened a number of times. Since 2007, severed human feet have been washing up on the shore of the Pacific Northwest. The first was a right foot still inside of a size 12 Adidas shoe. The second was again a right foot, size 12, but it was in a Reebok shoe. Since then, 15 more feet have washed up on shore. To this day, we don't know who they belong to or what happened to them, or even if they were victims of the same killer. It's really freaking creepy if you ask me. And in our number one spot today, we have the witchcraft. This is the name of a boat that set sail on December 22nd, 1967. On board was the captain, Dan Burak, and his friend, Patrick Horgan. The two headed off to get a good look at Miami's Christmas lights. However, after traveling just one mile out, they contacted the Coast Guard, saying that the boat had hit something, but there was no damage. Dan seemed to be calm on the call to the Coast Guard and said they just needed a tow to the shore. So they figured that the boat's propeller was just damaged or something like that. The Coast Guard immediately went out, but when he arrived at the spot the boat was said to be, no one was there. It took him only 19 minutes to get there, yet the boat was already gone. Here's where it gets super weird. This boat was virtually unsinkable. Not only did they have life jackets and lifeboats on board, but the boat had a special flotation device installed in it. This made it basically unsinkable. So even if the boat started filling with water, part of it would still be sticking out of the water so the Coast Guard would be able to see it. And also they had flare guns on board with them. So if something serious started to happen, they could have set those off. They didn't. The boat and the two friends on board just disappeared without a trace and to this day have never been found. Mm -hmm. 